Fuck yes. All right, let's 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 play this game. Welcome to the Shady Hub. All right, we gotta break the loop. Okay, let's just jump straight in. For the last time, I can't I remember. I don't know if you just give me a second. Oh, you're not even trying. <laughs> oh, oh, lady, I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's not good. You just hurry up already? <laughs> Fucking hell. Holy shit. This is dying. Okay, cool. We died. <sighs> oh, what was that? Whew. Whew. That was one ridiculous nightmare. Oh, I gotta stop drinking. Oh. Okay. How the fuck did I get here? Ooh. Wow. Dr hey, it dropped us straight into it. Oh my gosh. The cutscenes are. Oh my gosh. I. Well, this needs to be done. Um. Controller. To stabilize movements. What the fuck is that? Sensitivity. Let's double. No, that's uh. 66. Yeah, let's get to get it to 66. Actually, no. 69. <laughs> Alright. Yes. Okay, press L to dodge. Oh. Pick up bottles? I can. Ooh. Let's throw it at something. Aha! This is a pretty nice looking game though. Breaker. I can so, a place you just woke up and don't know what's happening. Don't fret, rambling freaks got you covered like a warm blanket. Here's my first track off my first album. Oh boy, time flies. Well, at least it used to. Happy first. Oh, I'm good. All right, cool. Hey, babe, did you miss me? Weapons. Squeeze R to shoot, hold left trigger to reload. Old fashioned firearms like these could occasionally jam. Clear the jam by pressing X to get back in the fight. Light infantry machine pistol. Why do I know this? Oh, oh okay. Already got full ammo. Got him. <laughs> Don't need it. Come on. Oh, it's me. I'm you. Of course you are. 
fine. Okay. Feels familiar. This place is mine. Army of the Motherland. Oh. Be your best self. Trinkets to have imbued with the power of Black Race Temporal Anomaly. Okay. Shiny. Mm, makes me feel funny. Hackamajig. Black Reef. Must be the low season. <sighs> I made this, I think. The Hackamajig. So you can hack into electronic shit. Alright. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, so it just works. Okay, it just works. Son of a... I don't know any damn code. Yo, hello? What the... Colt? Yeah. Hey, is my name Colt? That's gotta be it, right? I don't feel like a Colt. Aww. Guess I forgot the code after all. Maybe I should go look for this code. Oh, hello. All right, cool. Let's go find this code. Be sneaky, sneaky time. Pulse. Doesn't sound good at all. I'm gonna be sneaky now. Shit. Executions. Right bumper. Frank Spicer, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Spicer. Frank. <laughs> oh, they just disappeared. That felt Fuck. too easy. I've done this before, haven't I? <sighs> yep. Yes, I did. I didn't want to do that. I'll put it away. 
Oh, I see. Okay. I can put them both away. Alright. Cool. Damn. Still working out the kinks to this game, I guess. I'll be back tomorrow. Fuck. Why can't I remember? Well, that's pretty. They're a pretty cool, cool looking game, to be honest. Unclefker, first time chat. You are sweating profusely. I'm like, I'm like the opposite. It is cold right now. I've got the heater on full ball, but I'm still like, my hands are freezing. <sighs> Palms are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. Sixth meat meal of the day. Not gonna lie, it sounds pretty gay, which is pretty awesome. Focus. Press down on the D-pad. Tag an enemy. Visibly radiate power. You haven't eaten a vegetable in weeks, your testosterone is off the char charts, you feel like you could win a fight against a grizzly bear. Is it, um, is it, is it weird that I heard, I kind of read that in uh, Jordan Peterson's voice? Waiting for something to happen, basic loadout. It's just walking around. Cheap, aggressive bastard, unaware of my presence. Standard kit. Okay. <laughs> Up yours, woke moralists! Fucking love it. This guy's gonna get stabbed! Oh, fuck. Nope. Bare hands. Bare hands to that shit. Okay. Whoa. I'm gonna throw this at someone. Oh. Ah, oh, there's... Oh, thanks for the follow! Welcome! Welcome to the Shady Harbor! What? Alarms and scouts. Oh, wow. Wait, so why puts that in my hand? Hello? Hello? I, uh... It's Juliana, in case you didn't remember. Okay, look, I don't know what I did last night, exactly, but if you could just, uh... What? What did you say? Uh, I think we know each other. We know each other, don't we? Yes! <laughs> Finally! You're back! So, how much do you remember about me? Well, it's... Mm, Curse! <laughs> I can do more voices. You want to kill me for some reason, and I already know some fucking code, which I don't, and there's a You wanna break the loop, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, look, if you don't try to break the loop, I'm just going to kill you over and over again in increasingly violent ways until you do. Fine, I'll break your fucking loop, and whatever I did to piss you off, I'm sorry. The fuck? Uh, still there? You never said that before. We dated, didn't we? Just go inside the library. <laughs> I fucking love this. 
<laughs> the banter is great. I love it. Alright, alright. Should I just run and gun it in this game? Right, can I just, like, kick this? Nope. Where am I going? Wait. Peek. Oh, I see. Oh, hello. No? Is there an open window? Swack! No. What are you doing? Is this going to be a productive day or not? Library. Chopping I don't know where the job. fucking... I don't know where it is! Oh, hey. This, 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 this. Oh, hello. Was is das? Hmm. No. No. Seriously? You put a thing that I can look into don't and a button that says peek. And you don't allow me to peek into it. Okay. Cool. Whatever game. How do I get in? Get up? No? The fuck? Okay, now I'm just confused. As to what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh! Is there something on this side? No. No. Oh. Yeah? Yeah? No. Okay. Okay, I'm stuck. Oh, there's a thing here. That would probably help. I am fully healed. Is that a pumpkin? No. can hear people. I like the he that the health bar is very reminiscent. Right. I'm in the library. Whatever you do, don't pull the lever. Wait, what? Hello? Tug tug. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What? Oh. The oh. fuck? <laughs> oh, you always fall for the same old shit. Just once, please. Can you try? Try your hardest to make this interesting. Oh. What the fuck is this? Our nieces! Uh, Ooh, you're gonna uh, give me that attitude? Uh, you know, I usually make it easy uh, for you, you ungrateful. Is this in the Dishonored universe? Uh, ah! Time let you see yourself bitch! Now. Yep, we did. <laughs> uh, why are you doing this? Uh, what did oh, I man. do to you? You don't remember. How about that code? You remember that yet? I don't know the code! Don't tell her. I don't- I don't know it! Hot watch. Briefly thinks I'm his mum. Reads this note. Hi, Carl. Hi, Carl. Blue snakes. <laughs> Juliana watches you sleep. Creepy. Oh. Alright. Alright, the door is locked. Oh, wait, what? Jump, jump, you'll... 
Oh, okay. Okay. Wee! You, you gotta be shitting me! What are you? The fuck? Listen to me! You wrote it on Black Reef. You already know the code. What the fuck does that mean? Hello? Are you dead yet? Uh, what? I'm waiting. Pull me up! Manual. The postcard, dumbass! You wrote it on the Black Reef postcard! Me and me. Okay. I'm gonna drop wait, you now. Wait, no, wait! What the fuck? No! no! Oh. Okay, I didn't survive. I lied to myself. Fuck. Ah, I just dropped myself. What kind of fucked up world is this? Ah. Okay. Uh. Postcard. Postcard. Get the postcard. Get off this beach. Seven the postcard. Same morning. Same fucking radio show. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, ah, twenty five twenty. Let's uh break some loops. Oh, yeah. You want me to break it? You don't want me to break it. What do you want from me? I want you to not suck. Okay. It's been a pretty shitty morning. Or two. So I'm done. With you and all of this, it ends. Today. You don't even know where to start. Up dog. Obviously. Up dog. What's up dog? Tap a charge. Grenade proximity charge and trip mine. Far out. That sounds cool. Oh shit, I'm gonna need some more ammo. Wait, how do I do the thing then? Oh, I can empty my offhand. That's cool. Why would someone put this? Whoa! What the fuck? Wow! Wow! Okay. What is this for? <laughs> ah, it's cold and weird. <sighs> Reprise. This mysterious piece of metal seems to belong to you. Slavit grants you the reprise ability, which will return you to life after you die, but only twice. Well, ah, oh, so it's like a thing. Mm. Okay, here goes. And me. It is cold. I was not lying. Holy moly. Oh, I survived. Okay. I have no idea what any of this means. Oh no. Wait, what? Oh, leads. Up, dam. Oh, up, dam. Okay. All right. Press B. No. Uh. Okay. These are for slabs. Okay. Big boost. Spring healed. Okay. Cool. Ooh. Some 
Oh, I can put trinkets on it? Shock of silver. Alright, cool. Okay, I don't know what happened then, but that is one of the most confusing tutorials I've ever seen, but at least it was quick and I will learn as I go. It'll be fine. <gasps> oh, it's a doggy! Alright, let's kill some friends, I guess. Enemies? Frenemies. <laughs> Dorsey Square, second floor. Dorsey Square, second floor. Dorsey Square. I asked you to do something different, Cold, and you decided to go to fucking Updom? How do you know where I am? You got cameras all over The radio tower tracks your position, and you always act so surprised, like I wouldn't know exactly where you're going. I don't even know where I'm going. Uh, Dorsey Square is just down the road cliffside, let me guess, second floor. Sounds like you're angling for an invite. <laughs> so you can show off your little beer tap again? Different me. This cult's done talking to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the way, everyone recognizes your stupid jacket. I like this bitch. jacket. Yeah, me too. He's got a cool jacket. A bitch. Alright. Death died here. Death died here? Play your way. Set traps and use noise. Quickly wait for conversation to finish in order to isolate your enemies. Or go in gaze, gaze guns blazing. Gaze blazing. Hells yeah, let's go in gaze blazing. Alright, um... Take the high ground. Yes. Hey, it's done randomly. Welcome back. I just want a silenced gun, though. Learn about what? What is that? No, too far away. Do you know the trans connection of this game? I do not. I do not know the trans connection. My friend, my pal, my boon companion, last thing I would do is hurt you, but I'm going to kill everyone on this island if this game keeps being fucky. I know you had a rough go of it in before times, that you came here for a fresh start. Swore you'd never fix another circuit overload. Detest being called Sparky. But sugar buddy, gooseberry, muffin snack, my favorite toe. Somebody fused the, some wires or wired some fuses, and now every time the phone dials out, the gate opens. We're for taking in freight, but ship a security if I get burst, busted, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh, hang on. Ooh. Hello, there's a thing here. Oh. Huh? Dang it. Keypad. Wait, is it the same key? For everything? Are you serious? 
The campaign designer is trans, she is Dana Nightingale, she's the level designer for Dishonored. Oh, that's so cool! Oh gosh, she's fucking awesome. Levels were amazing in that game. What game? You can grab what? What did that do? What did that hack do? So confusing. What oh, is another one? Why has he got a green face? Oh, hey. I think I maybe sort of saw someone go and look in. Stealth. For adventure. Oh, I got them all. Ha <laughs> ha. Suckers. Why is it doing that? Why can't I touch it? It's annoying. What did I pick up? What is it? Limp 10. I think I've already got one of those. Pretty cool. You you're watching cop videos of people peeling off shit. It's just funny when they say I don't didn't do shit and then peel off. Open the door and then kick it. I like that. I'm gonna start doing that when I walk through rooms. I'm gonna open doors and just kick it. As if I've as if I've like kicked the door open. Oh, poor thing. Well, I'm making progress, apparently. Oh my gosh, no head! Uh... Oh my gosh! Ah, 
whoa. Pretty well. Whoa, it's me. Oh, does this work? Ah, I'm busy. Pop. Feeling just fine. Nom. So many skateboards, like tiny little skateboards everywhere. Buckle. 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 Whoa. You can double jump? Shit, it is very locked. Can I dual, wheel dual wield machetes? Oh. Ah, ah, I recognize that bin model. That's dishonored too. Oh, hey, buddy. To what? Oh, fuck. That's dead? Yeah. Shotgun. I went. Hey, hey. Oh yeah. Shotgun time. Oh yeah. Hey. Hey everyone. Captain Colt here. I mean, the locked doors are very reminiscent of Dishonored as well. mannequin things.
Don't need it. Ma'am. Latent violation of the closed door policy. Oh my gosh, I'm doing terribly. Oh. Whoa, what the fuck was that? Is that guy just like trying to blow himself up? Oh, hey, what's up, buddy? Three bullets left. My flag. Do I need a key for it or some shit? No. Don't be green cold. Oh, I'm good. What do I need nails for? Already got full ammo. You see people know what the hey you wanna see people know what the issue is but refuse to do things to help minorities? Yeah? Well, I would prefer to see people to actually help minorities, but <sighs> that would be nice. TikTok. Okay. Give me a sec. Yeah, I no, thank you. Fast way out. Detect the loop, know the protocol. I just want to find out what's going on. What am I supposed to be doing here? Hope you've got a plan. Nope. Yes, I've actually been meaning to watch that. Reminding me. 
Oh, I'm being sneaky. <laughs> what the fuck? The dialogue is fucking hilarious. seem to like pick it up though. Why can't I turn it off? Oh shit. Oh shit. I got two of them. Stay still for a second. Thank you. Oh my gosh, there's heaps of them. Where's the rest of them? Come back. Where are they? Oh shit, hello. Ah! Come over here, buddy. Come in. Can I pick this up and move it? Damn it. I call the cops uh, uh, on McDonald's over cold french fries. What the fuck was that? Oh, they're shooting through the door. Oh, what? I died. Ah! The killer hangover. Die, die, and die again. Alright, let me get a drink, and I'll be right back. There is one more thing I want to get.
do, do. I got my Pringles, I got my jelly beans, I got some Pringles, and I got some jelly beans. Yes, so. Rushing through this game is fun. Yes, they're doing just as well rich. as other middle upper middle class black children. Sound. Oh. Headphones. Now I've got sound. Upper middle class black children are not failing standardized tests. Yes, they're doing just as well rich. as other middle class kids. Ah, yeah, so then there, there you is go. not a race problem. There's a, class There's a issue. poverty problem that has been exacerbated <clears throat> by first slavery, then segregation, then yes. Jim Crow, yes. then bias. Yes. But what are the answers to help to to what's that to, to help ameliorate all of these problems? Let's say it at the and same time. Ready? One, two, three. Reparations. <laughs> no? Reparations. Reparations in the form of making school teachers work 240 days a year instead of 180. You make want them, them to work, work more? eight hours a day. Make school go from 8:30 in the morning to 5:30 in the evening. What the fuck? Do you that what? 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 That makes no sense. What the fuck? <clears throat> Rep making school teachers work. Motherfucker thinks that teachers only work 180 days a year. The only people who think that um, kids should be at work at, at um, school longer. Are people who want who want uh, the parents to be able to be at work longer? Fucking hell! Hey, check out this one. This one was in, this one was. Well, Hyundai funny. was uh, caught for using. Holy shit! That's loud. Using child labor. Of course. Why? They got plenty of Koreans. Who are child? Well, Korean kids. <laughs> Here's the twist. It's a Hyundai subsidiary plant that's located in Alabama. Oh, we're using white people? That's Hell yeah! Let's go! <laughs> How's it feel, Whitey? The table captured. <laughs> no time for Little League, I guess. <laughs> My word. That's a third world state, though. Like Cambodia prices. To be honest with you, this is the most woke thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you think that fucking Asian people have sweatshops? Let me show you, Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Boom, woke. Hopefully they're getting paid. School credit. I don't know. I don't think you know how uh, child labor works. How does it they work? get paid? They usually don't. <laughs> yeah, they do. No, they give them a like fucking a can of tuna or some shit. <laughs> Tuna's good. Yeah. Sardines. Wait, I don't know how you're going to feel about this. The kids weren't white. What were they? I think they were Guatemalan. <gasps> oh. oh <laughs> we're so fucked up. We're so fucked up. Never had little league. Hyundai. I <laughs> got you got you got you got to admit that's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. I thought I read more than that. Alright, let's survive again. Wait, where am I shotgun? I want my shotgun. Oh, my shotgun. Why do I want to, Why do I feel like playing Hitman now? I don't have the patience for it right now. What's this? Okay. Uh, there's nothing much I can do. Let's do it. Explore. 
up them. What's that? <laughs> Ow! Bit my lip. Wait, do I not go through the whole game again? Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not complaining. <clears throat> so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. What's in here? Oh, hello. Death died here. Oh no, we already went through that. Okay. Okay, so there's a candy bar. Ooh. Nails. Why do I want nails, by the way? Of all things? The fuck? Oh, I can go upstairs. Alright, 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 alright. This guy. And this one. Woohoo! Hey, base project! I'm just murdering my enemies, friends, shipmates, crew. I, I'm not sure. I've just started this game. I just got here. How many janitors are there? I don't know. I just got here. Where's this? Smash their machines. Okay. Why? What does that do? Okay. I've smashed their machines. Now what? Yeah. I've got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. You feel strange today. Holy shit! 
Sparta! <laughs> fucking hell. <gasps> he went fucking flying! <laughs> Holy shit! I fucking got him! Alright, where, where was that uh, stuff that was gonna heal me? Where's the healing? Give, 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 give heals. Don't feel good, don't feel bad, just feel neutral. Oh, I hate those. That that shit is the worst. When you're not sure what's wrong, but like something is not quite right. Hmm. Uh -huh. I could have sworn I saw some um some heals. Oh well. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm good. Hey buddy. All right, next. Let's see if I can. Oh, oh. Got to be another way. Ooh, shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. Give me. Get greedy. Fucking hell. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not a safe place. Oh, what's in this building? There is nothing forever young. I wanna be forever young. Black Reef is all yours. Use it. Make me. Stop trying to teach me things. Already got full ammo. Man, I wish I had an electric butler. Do all my chores. Shoot home invaders in the face. Okay, well, he said it can open blinds and lock doors and has a lot of other comforts. Seriously? What is it, my aunt? Does it make you? Why is some of this stuff, like, fucked? Wait, wait. Stop that. What the fuck? Guard it with your life. 
Like, that one's got a sniper. I want that sniper. Ooh, hello. Parkour! Parkour? Hello. What the fuck is this place? Some kind of password, maybe? Okay, right, fine. Get them all? Yay! Oh, hey.
shotgun and a sniper. Where's this gun? Oh, ho! Yeah, yes. Also, oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got a fucking sight on it. Oh, yeah. But this one. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. Didn't actually seem to do much. Okay. Why are you reloading? Why do you hate fun? 
Ooh, damn. I hit his head, like, apparently, as well. Okay, reload time. Fuck yeah. Oh, there's a cave. Oh, fucking what? Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Haha! <laughs> I love it when I see, like, reused um, models in games. That's from Dishonored 2. Shit, I don't know, but I did this 
little show when I was just starting out, right? Some no-name bar in some podunk town. No real crowd to speak of. But the people who were there... Oh, oh, oh they were fucking there, man. Dancing, yeah, and crying, too. Yeah, with the whole fucking rainbow of feelings. Yeah, I think that's when I knew we were the real shit. Die already! I guess, like, shooting these things does something. So let's uh, do that something, shall we? But this time let's, like, not do it in a way which destroys everything. Oh, that's one. Hey, hello. Oh no, wait. That's just a that's just a noisy thing. I don't want to really make noise. Um. All right. All right. Ah, perfect. What's this? Hey, I get into my house. Never give up. Okay. I won't. I come. 
compliment people all the time. Yeah. So mm. much run from a control room. This is too easy. Mm -hmm. Way too easy. Man, these guys are obnoxious. Meet hot singles every loop. Whoa, I'm finishing up there? Oh, okay. How do I exit? How do I get out? Exit. Oh, this door exit. Okay. Well, another fucking code. That's a cool gun! be able to destroy the light. I get them all. Hey. Hey, cool. Got some trinkets. The four pounder. Ooh, I'm good with what I have for now. This gun. Holy shit, does it fucking pump. I saw the Russian news. Which one? The one where they're trying to, like, claim that, um... Whoopsie daisies. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Bye bye. Huh. Those tunnels run underneath this entire island. That's how I'm getting to the complex. Okay. Thanks for telling me that dialogue. So what is this Russian news you speak of? Oh. Okay. See, that's shit. Fucking scary.
Ooh. Aww. Alright, so number one. This gun is fucking epic. Wait a second. Why can't I... Why is there no handguns? What? Okay. Ooh, discoveries. Holy shit. Oh my gosh, there's so much information here. Ta-da! So yes, Ken has loops. Mm. Ah. So. Do 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 All right, I think it's finally time for me to talk about the monarchy and stuff. Um, I just wanted to like talk a little bit about how some of the things that's happening in Australia, at least, if you're interested. Um. Whoa. I'm just changing my stream information. I'm just formatting my hard drive as well while this is going on. Oh, they've actually updated um, Satisfactory, by the way. Like, uh, it's no longer on Experimental. Everyone's got access to it now.
shouldn't be too loud anyway. Well, there's a few things that have happened recently in Australia which are actually quite, like, awful. Like... One of the or one of the shittiest things is our prime minister, who's a Labour uh, government prime minister. So Labour being the uh, the centre the centre party, like um, as opposed. So it's like the it's like the America's Democrat uh, Democrats kind of only less right wing. Um, it's a very cent centrist party with some um prog with some progressive uh, values um, on it. But you know, ultimately, they um, bow to capitalism as, as as a system. So, like, obviously, it's only so much that a leftist party can actually do within capitalism when they're not actually a leftist. Um, not as incompetent, thankfully. But yeah. Um, where is it? There we go. So, um, so here's so so there's been a lot of like, uh, there has not been any negative coverage of the monarchy. Uh, over the last uh, few weeks, like over the last week, sorry, it hasn't been that long um, since the Queen passed away. Um, which to me, like, I think that it's definitely a uh, lost opportunity to talk about um, um, Republic, becoming a Republic as Australia. But instead, everyone seems to be like, just like talking about respect for the Queen and stuff like that. And so I saw this article. I thought I'd read through it and see what you thought. Um, after Queen Elizabeth II's death, Indigenous Australia can't be expected to shut up. Our sorry business is without end. Um, yeah. This is what I think about when I think about these things and the mourning of the Queen. Like, today is Thursday... Um, it's a public holiday now for the mourning of the Queen. Um, when the Queen first visited Australia in 1954, my mother almost did not get to see her. Like millions of other school kids, Mum was expected to join the throng flocking to glimpse the young royal. The problem was, my mother didn't have any socks. She was a dirt poor Aboriginal kid living in a tin humpy in the outskirts of Kunabarabram. Kuna Kunabarabram in northwest New South Wales. Socks were a luxury. Clothes and shoes were shared among a dozen siblings. The school said no socks, no go for the trip to Dubbo to see the Queen. Mum's older brother had made a, the royal trek a day earlier and met Mum at the back fence between the primary and high schools and threw his socks over. It is a memory that has stayed with Mum. She has told me the story many times, wearing her brother's cast-off socks to see the Queen. It is one of the rich memories of a long life, and she has other memories, other stories that she's told me. Stories of her father being tied to a tree like a dog by police and left all day without food or water to swelter in the sun. Seeing Aboriginal men arrested for drinking alcohol and roped together and marched down the main street of her hometown. Stories of two younger brothers who died as children. Stories of her siblings taken to welfare homes. Stories of aching hunger, of once following a white girl eating a cake around the eating a cake around the schoolyard and pouncing on a crumb that the girl dropped. My mother still says it was the best cake she ever tasted. 
The girl with no socks got to see the queen, while her family and other black families lived in poverty that the crown inflicted upon them, living homeless in a land that had been stolen from them in the name of the crown. We aren't supposed to talk about this. I called my mother this week and she told me the story of her childhood brush with royalty over again. I have thought about mum and dad and all of my family, all of my people. First Nations people, who die young and live impoverished and imprisoned lives in this country. We aren't supposed to talk about these things this week. We aren't supposed to talk about the colonisation, empire, violence about Aboriginal sovereignty, not even about the Republic. Everyone from the Prime Minister down has told us it is not appropriate. I'm sure I'm not alone amongst Indigenous people wrestling with swirling emotions. Among them has been anger. The choking, asphyxiating anger at the suffering and injustice my people endure. This anger is not good for me. It is not good for my mental health. It is not good for my physical health. I have been short of breath and dizzy. But that is nothing compared to what too many other Indigenous people go through. Day after day, those languishing in cells, those who take their own lives, those who are caught in an endless cycle of despair. Writing this is not good for me. I feel my pulse racing now. I feel the tension building in my head, the veins constricting. I know what will come. I know the abuse that will come from those who don't like Aboriginal people who speak up. I know that online trolls will target my family with the most foul language, even threats of physical violence. Why do we do it? I ask myself that too. Why do we have to explain ourselves? Why do we have to relive pain? Why? Because a voice is all we have. Because too often that voice is silenced. Like this week. The other side of history. I have wondered where that voice is. If it has spoken, it has more often been in muted tones, lest anyone be offended. I have wondered where the voices of Indigenous political leadership have been. Where have they been as Indigenous rugby league player Caitlin Warren received a suspension to the equivalent of a quarter of her salary for an Instagram post deemed offensive to the Queen? Hold on. NRL W player and former Jillaroo Caitlin Moran has been issued a one game suspension for an offensive social media post about the Queen just hours after her death. The Newcastle Knights mm. player will also be required to undergo education training in consultation with the Australian Rugby League Indigenous <laughs> Council. Let's go to the AFL now, and Brisbane Lions midfielder Jared Berry is free to play in Friday night's prelim against Geelong after success at the tribunal. He's had his charge for making unreasonable contact with the I region of Demons player Clayton Oliver dismissed. The Lions argue... Yeah, you can't offend the Queen, she's dead, yeah. Australians will likely vote in a referendum for a constitutionally enshrined Indigenous voice to count Parliament, but what good would that voice be if at times like those, like these, it is reduced to a whisper? This past week I've been reminded what it is to come from the other side of history. History itself that is written as a hymn to whiteness. History written by the victors and often written in blood. It is fashioned as a tale of progress, as a civilizing mission. As historian Carolyn Elkins writes in Legacies of Violence, her history of the British Empire for hundreds of millions of people, the Empire's velvet glove contained an all too familiar iron fist. From India to Africa to Ireland, the Pacific, the Caribbean, and of course here, Australia. People from the other side of history have felt that fist. It is not a zero-sum game. 
There are things in the British tradition that have enriched my life. But history is not weighted on the scales. It is felt in our bones. It is worn on our skin. It is scarred in memory. How do we live with the weight of this history? How do we not fall prey to soul-destroying vengeance and resentment, yet never relent in our righteous demand for justice? At times like these, I struggle with that dilemma, because Australia has never reached a just settlement with First Nations people. The voice to Parliament, whatever its virtues, falls well short of justice. It is another step on the long journey to justice. But again, we don't talk about that this week. I have felt a sadness at feeling adrift, estranged from friends and colleagues. Sadness at knowing that at times like these there is a chasm between us. I have watched as others have worn black and reported on this historic event, participated in this ritual mourning, and knowing I cannot. They come to this with no conflict. I cannot. My colleagues can extol the Queen's undoubted and admiral <laughs> devotion to duty. They can lament the passing of everyone's grandmother. My thoughts have been on my grandmother. My people have a word. Yinjimara. Its meaning escapes English translation. It is a philosophy, a way of living, grounded in a deep respect. I have sought to show Yinyamara to those who, for whom this moment is profound. This is their sorry business, and I respect that. But it will pass. For Indigenous people, though, our sorry business is without end. At times like these, I wonder what it would be not to know apocalypse, to not know what it is to come from a people who face an existential threat, who have clung on to their very place on this earth. I wonder what it would be like for me to be like my colleagues, for whom this is one of the most defining stories of their lifetimes. Sometimes. I wonder what it must be like to be white. But then, I would not be my mother's son. Son. Stan Grant is the ABC's International Affairs analysis, uh, Analyst and Presenter of Q&A on Thursday at 8.30pm. Oh, I didn't know that he was doing um, Q&A. Um, I haven't watched Q&A in a while. He also presents China Tonight on Monday at 9.35pm on ABC TV and Tuesday at 8pm on ABC News Channel. <sighs> Yeah, I just thought that that was kind of the most important point of view for Australians. Not just Aboriginal Australians, not just First Nation people of Australia, but like white people, uh, brown people, black people, like we need to be aware of just how much the continuation and of the absolute destruction of a entire people is what is that that is that was the cost of having the good life that i enjoy it was at the cost of his mob, his family, his history, wiped from the earth. That's what the monarchy means to me. Um, and... Yeah. I don't really care about respect, I don't really care about who the Queen was, all I care about is the fact that 
the monarchy pre pre presided and continues to preside under a over a white supremacist system of power over indigenous people around the world the commonwealth still treats black people and first nation people like this america is not the only place in the world where black people and native people are treated like absolute shit yes um there was the stolen generation which is um ha which is it for for the canadians out there was is was basically the same as the um uh residential school system the same same thing um where they were where eugenics was used to try and breed um first nation people out of existence and the crown presided over this injustice the monarchy and white people in general underneath the banner of the all white people under the banner of the commonwealth are have a debt to the people whose entire existence was destroyed so that we could enjoy their lands their riches and their culture and i think it's a mistake to be respectful during this time respectful in inverted commas i think that's a mistake and I think this is the the time to talk about Republic, is the time to talk about reparations, because everyone will fucking listen, whether they like it or not. Everyone's emotions will flare up, everyone will feel something, and that will attach that memory, that thought of reparations, of justice... Give me a second. But yeah. Continue in a sec. Let's roll. Because we're so strong. So Yeah. White people afraid of a um replace a white replacement. Um probably only scared of this because that's what uh, it's projection of what white people do to uh, other cultures. Yeah. Um when it comes to the queen didn't know her, 
those who knew her should mourn her, but the symbol of the queen, I have no respect for. You do not have my fealty, you do not have my respect. Um, you presided over and continued to preside over a genocide against native people all over the world. The crown is a symbol of white supremacy and it needs to be torn down as part of a transition towards a better society. An example of colonization in today's day and age, backlash grows over decision to scrap Victorian hospital's indigenous name in favor of Queen Elizabeth II. Daniel Andrews, another Labour Premier, so that is the, uh, that's our version, a Premier is our version of a Governor of uh, State in America. I don't know what the equivalent is in um, Canada or uh, elsewhere. But Daniel Andrews defends plan to change the name of Marunda Hospital from Wui Wurong word that celebrates the natural environment. But yeah, Victoria First Peoples Assembly has accused the Andrews government of making a hospital in Melbourne's east culturally unsafe for Indigenous Australians after it vowed to rename the site in honour of Queen Elizabeth II, dumping its Indigenous name. Yeah, yeah, good, good job, good, good job, leftist party of 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 good, good, good job, Mr. Labour government. Good, good fucking, yeah, that's not tone deaf at fucking all. Um, in a pre-election pledge on Sunday, Victoria's Premier, Daniel Andrews, promised to rebuild the Marunda Hospital in East Ringwood at a cost of one billion dollars and rename it to pay a tribute to the Queen. The renaming has sparked a backlash from some Indigenous leaders and others, but Andrews on Monday defended the decision and said it was a fitting tribute. I like this one. Some thoughts on the new name. Gungi Guding Bunan, Durung Jering. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm doing my best. The closest uh, town Gurung has for get in the bin. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's fitting. It's definitely fitting to rename a hospital. What is... Yeah. Rep foreign monarch... Wait, well, it's not just a foreign monarch. Well, I mean, like, they are our monarch until we have a republic, but, but the Greens party is the one other RRA republic party. Ugh. Goodness me. That's disgusting. And so Caitlin Moran did a, had a post about uh, the Queen. Um, what were the original comments? What was the comment? What was the original? What was the post? <laughs> oh, oh wow, okay. I think that's a different Caitlin Moran, to be honest. Um... Oh my gosh, can you like, show me what the, show me the fucking... Show me the post! Show me the post! I need to find this post.
Staves. I need to find uh, I need to find the original post. What was the post? Why are people talking about a post and not showing what the post is? Maybe the Daily Mail will show us. I don't even know what, what she posted, honestly. Oh, 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 dumb dog saying death was good day. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is it. Today's a good fucking day. Uncle Luke, um, country music artist Luke Coombs, announces his tour and this dumb dog dies. Moran wrote, happy fucking Friday. What? Meh. That, no, you're like, I just read it out. That was it. That was it. She just called the queen a dumb dog. That's it. Train dog, maybe. But yeah, that was it. Graham Norton defends inviting JK Rowling on his show. Oh my gosh. Trending in Australia. Wait, Posey Parker. I think I know who that is. Oh, yeah, Posey Parker is a turf. That's right. Posey Parker got banned from Mum's Net for her constant attacks on Islamic women posting there. Her harassment of them, questioning them about bombs, because I do. That was a few years back. That meal the cis folk should have been listening, paying attention back then. Gender critical feminist Posey Parker. Yeah, of course. Aww. Yeah, yeah, they are very racist. All right. So let's find that uh, video, shall we? That we were talking about with Mia Mola. But let's invite, let's invite some fun.
Let's fight invite trans investigations. There we go. And change the wait, what is this? Change the topic to politics and let the fun begin. Do do also Sneeko is having a midlife crisis. Oh no. Ah. I thought I was hoping that would be like my um algorithm screwing up again and giving me something like really fucking hilarious to react to, but uh twas not to be. There we go. Ooh, I forgot about that one. Better read that I want to do that one. All has warped you. This Here video is sponsored by Adam and Eve. Use the code in the description to get 50% off one item, plus free shipping in the US and Canada. Hi everyone, my name is Mia Mulder. In 2014, comedian Joan Rivers made a joke about then First Lady Michelle Obama. She was asked at a wedding for some reason whether or not America would ever have a gay president. And she said, we already have it with Obama, so let's calm down. You know, Michelle is a trans. When she was asked to clarify her comments to CNN for some reason, she said, I think it's a compliment. She's so attractive, tall, with a beautiful body, great face, does great makeup. Take a look and go back at La Cage aux Folies. The most gorgeous women are transgender. Too right, Joanne, you're so right. And shortly after, she died under actually suspicious circumstances during a medical examination. Which has led some people to think that the Obamas killed her for coming too close to the truth. This joke has spiraled out of control since then, with many people taking up the mantle of being- I fucking- th this is how it happens though. That's- it, like, you- you laugh, but this is how it always starts. It always fucking starts with just a joke, bro. That's how Super Straight started, that's how Maps started. Like, trans folk being the hottest? I, I don't know, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a take on that one. Investigators. If Michelle Obama is trans, then how many else might be trans? Maybe everyone. Uh, here's is trans. here's the here's the and thing. Here's, here's an issue I have, right? Okay. Uh, can somebody answer me this one? So, if we're talking about how beautiful and hot trans people are, right? And then making fun of TERFs at the same time for not being able to tell if another TERF is um, transgender or not. Based on the fact that TERFs tend to not take care of their personal appearance that well. Like, um, isn't that a cell phone? They have concluded that inverts worshipping Satan are all controlling the media. <laughs> and all of the world in order to sacrifice children. Literal Nazi ship. Just literal Nazi ship. <laughs> That's that that is literal just Nazi ship. To our dark god, <sighs> Baphomet. And all of this happened because of a stupid joke. Who is Michelle Obama? Uh, the first lady or the first tranny. The spirit of the goddess inhabits the tranny. Oh yeah. Is she Content really warning. Woman? The ancient origins of the tranny. Something doesn't look right. Hold on. Transvestigation is a catch-all term for the conspiracy theory that everyone in a position of power is actually a secret trans person. But not in the sense that I am a trans person. We'll get there. In fact, a lot of people in this space instead refer to inverts. Inverts are individuals who have sold their soul to some evil force, a spiritual force, often the devil, in exchange for power, influence. And I love that. I love that. They've got like Sean Connery had a breast reduction. A spiritual force, <laughs> okay. The devil. In because it doesn't have to make sense, like on a actual material level. It just has to make sense on their internal moral level. It's a difference between their individual their individual perspective not being able to be tested among, like against the real world and society at large. More people need to learn about dialectics. 
Teach dielectrics in high school. Exchange for power, influence, and success. This explains why in the mindscape of this theory, only inverts are people who have been able to become famous and become politicians. The cost of this trade is to become a trans person because purity is reflected on how a person looks. You are male, but because the devil has warped you, you become female. Or rather, you look like one. You may have seen images like these, for example, targeting not only Michelle Obama, but Kate Bush, Venus and Serena Williams, and basically any celebrity you can think of. Transvestigation has a lot of themes that are similar to other conspiracy theories that you may have heard of, such as QAnon, but it is slightly different. Transvestigation is highly spiritual, with a high focus on spirituality and individuality. What? It is not even nearly secular, but it also doesn't rely on any secular forces. You may think that people like this might be supporters of Donald Trump as a champion of the light. But most of them hate Donald Trump. Most of them hate far-right Republicans as well. <coughs> they belong to their own weird little sect, which I think is very interesting. To defy God's order, to twist what is male, to twist what is female, the Baphomet order emerged at the Garden of Eden. The theory has existed almost exclusively Holy, online wait, what? for a significant amount of time, but it really popped off when John Rivers died. Joe Rivers dying was like the 9-11 of this conspiracy theory because the Obamas did in Joan Rivers. Thanks, so Obama. Mentioning Joan Rivers dying. These people usually gather in Facebook groups, but also produce content on Twitter and YouTube that help contribute to the overall methodology of the theory. A person will ask the community at large about whether or not a famous person is an invert. And they will usually post a few pictures. Usually those pictures are taken at a very bad angle, bad lighting, just bad photographs. And that's, you know, that happens. Everyone takes bad photographs, even celebrities occasionally. And they will ask them to do sex determination. But it's oftentimes not about making some sort of scientific analysis of a picture, but rather for making fun of how the person in the picture looks. One of the most common replies in these common threads is man face. The most common people who are transvestigated are actually women. It does happen that men are too, and even occasionally some trans people, but mostly it's about women. But I should say at this point that this is not a large community. These groups can vary from just a few people to at most 15, 16,000, which on <laughs> I know, right? But dude, fuck dude, my mood I just feel like being really cold with everyone. Aw, be cold with me then and, and be nice to everyone else. Isn't that much. And this theory is very loud, but not a lot of people are actually involved in them. But there are some people who are key figures in this movement. And I want to talk about them as well. For this video, I don't want to use any real names or any real identifiers. Although, you will be able to find these people if you really want to go looking. I want to ask you now to not do that. A lot of these people seem either troubled or sometimes genuinely nice. They've just happened to fall into a really bigoted rabbit hole. I don't want these people to have any harassment because me having my channel- I don't think they're trans, I just think they're cis and just want attention. Why investigate if a trans person is trans? Uh, uh it's- it doesn't have to be, like, logical from our standpoint. It just has to confirm their preconceived notions about reality. That big still has significantly more reach than they do. That's why it's Nazi secondly, culture. I don't want them to inadvertently get more attention. I don't think that's going to help anyone. So, unfortunately, you'll kind of just have to trust no. me when I say that what you're about to see is a curated selection of what I think are the typical traits of this theory. But let's start at the very top with a person that I'm going to call... Tywin Lannister. This one's a girl, you idiot. There we go, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Tywin here is one of the most prominent posters in the transvestigation space. She has made multiple videos that stretch into several hours discussing transvestigation, the causes, the roots, the reasons, things like that. And she's also. The transvestigation. Wait, hold on. Sorry, I, I need I need to look at some of this. Hold on, let me just uh take this off screen. Um
Do you have any weirdos for the Queen way over there in Astros? Here in Bongaland, it's... Uh, yeah, we do. We, 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 we do... Em and Lotus, like, my biggest issue is... Um, Um, in Australia, when it comes to the Queen, like, the most cringe stuff is, um, uh, the, the fact that our Labour government is simping for the Queen so hard, and people are talking about duty and honour and shit, and I'm just like, what? What about the duty of white people to, um, recon for reconciliation? Is this it? No, this isn't it. This is something else. I need to find this. Transvestigation part three and... I need to find it. I think the first one is going to be easier to find. Oh my gosh. Taiwan here is one of the most prominent. Yes, PS that cock. Transvestigation 101 part 2. I think I might have found something else that's, um, that, that, that's cringe, but, uh, come on, show me, show me the, show me the fucking cringe. Oh my gosh. So bad here, the police have been itching for anything to another police car just tried to get you arrested because you gave a car a funny look and spat on the ground. <laughs> bad habit, I know. Uh, so, you know it's a particularly dangerous time now is, is one the excuse that, yeah, who's making it dangerous, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if I search Google, it'll come up. Hey! I found it. I found it. Oh, it's tiny little. It's a tiny little community. Chess, the truth of our reality, reality and birthday recap. Live with the Queen, uh, chess and scripture. Uh, Re Reading Blitz Tournament Final Games. What the fuck? This is so weird. Date night with the queen. Wait, what the fuck? Date night with the queen? Oh, no, wait. She's the chess queen. Okay, now I get it. Christmas music. Karaoke. Bio, your blood is more complicated than even heaven. Do not blood over intent. Flat earth stuff. I think I found a gold mine, everyone. I'm okay. I will please welcome your next guest, science guy, Bill Nye. Okay. Stuff that's too complicated for us at our level. Oh. Oh, I just assume you know police. You're looking to kill some minorities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fucking hell. 
It's like sharks. You're not gonna get bit eaten by a shark if you never swim in the ocean. I love it. I love it. How's it going? I am live here and I am glad that you could join me. I'm sitting the opposite way today so that I can use my computer and show you uh, when was this? When was this done? this presentation um, being heavily shadow banned, unfortunately. So if you could share this out to any... The 7th of February. Sorry, I'm not showing it on screen because I don't know what's going to come up on mine. So I'm going to go look through it. Hey, Hosea for life. How are you? But I found this. Immediately links modern Dave Chappelle. <laughs> modern shave Dave Chappelle is amazing. Hmm. There was a uh, transgender one in here. Hold on. Trophy care, patient storytelling, mental health. For... Oh, okay. So no, I thought this was a a, a different thing. Transgender 101 part one. Oh, okay, so it's just an event. It, it, all right, let's continue this. She has made multiple videos that stretch into several hours discussing transvestigation, the causes, the roots, the reasons, things like that. Also, and welcome back, Hoser for Life, friend of the show. The manager and hey! Of oh, fuck yes. Things. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you, if you, um, if you have, if you haven't watched it yet, watch Hannah Gadsby's um, shows, like her, her Netflix special. It, it's like fucking hilarious. Holy shit, laughing my fucking head off. Um, and then like, you know, like when she gets um, serious about shit, like it's just, yeah. Yeah. It's fucking epic. I love it. I love it. It's, it's so good. I haven't laughed that hard at a comedy show. You want to go, mate? <sighs> with groups that deal with transvestigation. Taiwan is a wonderful example because in a lot of her videos, she very much archetypes everything that's happening within the subculture. Taiwan is highly spiritual, highly bigoted, and does not like most mainstream sources about anything. And no, no fighting. Is definitely a natural woman. Hi everyone. Before we dig into all of that, we need to talk about biological sex. I've already made a couple of videos talking about gender and how it's mostly just a socially constructed mess of a thing, but that's not going to convince anyone who is into transvestigation or anyone who is transphobic generally. To them, what matters is cold, hard biology. And occasionally some religious fanaticism. We'll get into that. In biology- Based. Based. Based in Sophie. Based in Sophie. Sophie. Shakira, Shakira. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. Oh, soulmate! Oh, fucking two sex chromosomes dead. from our parents. The mom has eggs, all of which have the X chromosome. But sperm. That's not cringe. That's cute. And colorful. Sperm either have X. Mia won her election. Which one the eggs oh, nice. To receive. That is the chromosome makeup that the fetus will have. If a sperm has an X and the egg has an X, then you become XX and you become a female. And if the sperm has a Y, then the fetus becomes XY and develops into a typical male. Females! Love it. Doesn't it doesn't affect your genetics. It affects how you develop 
phenotypically. Phenotype basically means the observable traits about any biological organism. This includes yeah. things like genitals, secondary sexual characteristics, and the my, the best thing is like if you were like th this if she was going to um like talk to a debate debate bro about this is it would be about five seconds before like she's interrupted and the entire like explanation is derailed that's the most hilarious thing much much else so far this is what most people have learned especially people in transphobic communities who basically have only retained the idea that xx equals female and xy equals man but it's a bit more complicated than that. I could, at this point, dig into some intersex conditions, talking about cis women who have XY chromosomes, for example. But that, again, is not going to convince anyone who is transphobic to accept me as a woman or anyone else. That line of argument doesn't really work, so I'm not going to use it. But what I am saying is that genetics are complicated. Because while we yes. inherit sexed chromosomes, we also inherit a lot of other chromosomes. And all types of genetics, or most of them, at least... Yeah, like... It's almost as if, like, there's more to being a human being than just, like, two of our, what, 26 chromosomes? Like, is that, that, like we have more in common, with, you have more in common with a person of the opposite or uh, different gender than you do with a chimpanzee. Like, seriously, like, why are we focusing on stuff which is not relevant? correct, have an effect on how you look. This, of course, you already know. You know that hair color and eye color and all other sorts of things are also inherited, but aren't necessarily sexed in nature. Oh yeah, it's Both hug box time. can inherit your dad's nose, for example. But this can be made more complicated But the fact that not all genetics are created equal. Some genes will have a higher rate of expression depending on things that aren't actually genetic in origin. Things like diet, exercise, potential trauma that you may have endured. All of those things can affect your genetic makeup or rather the i'll give you one example of that um the medication that i take uh for my adhd um the methylphenidrate uh, hydrochloride which is uh derived from ritalin i believe it's a it's an amphetamine uh based um um adhd treatment and the way that works is by activating genes in my brain that's right i I've been undertaking gene therapy for most of my life. Because those genes in my brain don't activate by themselves. That's like literally what the what the actual drug does. It's really interesting when you look into it. The way that your genetic makeup is expressed. So some genes might be more active than other ones. And But still that affects more of the frontal lobe problem the frontal lobe capabilities and doesn't really um, change the fundamental flaws within the sort of like lizard brain area of my brain, like the hippocampus, I think. Uh... Uh, I always forget what, what it's called, but they, they, they pretty much narrowed, narrowed uh, ADHD and autism down to, like, the one of the more, like, ancient parts of the brain close to the SEM, um, which, ha which has some form of disorder, they're not sure yet. Like, neurologically, I'm talking here, not, like, um, uh, psych psychologically. Um, like, that's where the issue is. We've narrowed it down to that point. We can medicate the areas that are affected by the development going wrong from whatever point on that it needed to develop like the the you know the i i really wish i could remember the part of the brain that it was um but um it's the emotional regulation part of the brain emotional regulation part of the brain within like the like the more like older parts of the brain um, and so everything that's built on top of those capabilities has, like, flaws in it, so higher order of thinking is much harder to do. Um, external, st uh, external stuff. I don't know, I'm going on a tangent here, but what's r basically really interesting is that, um, some genes are activated by external stimuli. You have them, but they might not necessarily be activated, so those things are activated either by hormones, and uh, other for other drugs which activate those certain parts of the brain or certain parts of uh, the body. Really interesting. Finally reaching the point, it's possible to have a genetic makeup that doesn't look the way that you'd expect. The most obvious example here would probably be the cis women who have XY chromosomes. But I want to do a bit of a personal example here. Because and that too. You know how to get views here on YouTube. It's by doing story time. <laughs> It's like a vlog. Story time. I'm ripping up on content once again. When I began my transition in 2000 BC, 
the doctors had to <laughs> undergo like a flurry of health examinations and tests and psychological evaluations and all sorts of stuff. And a few doctors began expressing anxiety that I might have something called Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a genetic condition that affects connective tissue inside the body. And it can lead to a lot of various symptoms such as being very tall, which I am, hypermobility in your joints, which I do have, and it can also lead to increased rates of depression, which I also have. Triple kill! There are many other symptoms here, and basically I have most of them. But the most dangerous one, the reason why they really wanted to check it if I really had it, is because it can lead to heart conditions. Mm. And I have kind of a weak heart. So, for months, my doctors basically tell me that because I check basically every <laughs> single symptom on the box, Fair enough. I can basically live my life as if I have Morphin Syndrome until some point in the future when they'll do a genetic screening for formality's sake. But that genetic screening eventually happens. And it turns out that I don't have it. What? What had ended up happening was that phenotypically I had signs of Marfan syndrome that I actually didn't have. Now this is obviously a pretty niche example, but the point here is that people can develop in ways that don't look like their genetic makeup should make one look like. Another example here might be identical twins who have radically different skin color, even though they are genetically identical. All of this means that there are some physical characteristics that mostly overlap with the expectations from genetics, but not all the time. There are women who, for lack of a better term, look more manly than other women. There are men who look a bit more womanly than other men, who don't have intersex conditions, who are fully genetically the biological sex that they say they are, but who still look very, very differently. This means that from purely a visual standpoint, there are oh, whoops, I did the wrong way around. methods for sex determination. Even in sports, what often happens is a deep visual inspection of the genitals and genetic screenings. But transvestigators aren't out here genetically screening everyone. They just looking. Yes, and this is the best bit. Bring out your calipers! And from a purely rational way, there is no way to do Oh, so stop. cute! Well, the lows and trap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stop them from trying. The most common argument has to do with something called Q angles. It's the angle formed between the quadriceps. Oh, I love this. Tele tendon. Women. Quite literally, quite quite literally, like it's 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 skull measuring, but for trans people, it's it's literal Nazi shit. Typically, have a higher angle, and men have a lower one. Another common point of analysis have to do with like it's it's like it's like um the you know you know the incel shit where they measure each other's like skulls and the way their shape their heads are shaped to say oh you'll I'll never like you'll never be attractive because of the this this feature this feature and this feature. And like this is objective attractiveness, so even though attractiveness attractiveness varies from person to person, and it's also like socially changes as well. Mm. Dialectics again, but yeah, it's funny. Clavicles. If you have a straight clavicle, you're a man. If you have angled clavicles, you're a woman. Same thing goes for the neck. If you have a sloping neck, that means you're a woman. If you have a straight neck, that means you're a man. Are broad shoulders and they tend to be wide enough to fit three of his heads across females on the other hand our shoulders are more narrow and you can generally fit about two and a half or less of our heads next to each other across our shoulders they also check out the fingers if your index finger is shorter than your pointer finger you're a man they also use what? the prominence of your brow ridge your hairline all sorts of vaguely sex physical characteristics that they can analyze. But by far, the most common one that has been promoted and used by Tywin herself has to do with the hip. You probably already know this. Women, on average, have wider and more flared hips than men. Yay. And in these transvestigation circles, if you have straight hips. hips that are narrow and don't flare, you are, without a doubt, 100% a man. They're so sure in fact, Yay, I'm a woman! Has the golden standard Oops, of sex mind. determination. Because of course, women have to have wide hips for carrying a child. Oh, the yeah. And production of life. Sex should be sacred. It's worth mentioning here that many of the methods Of course he does. Of course he does, based. Necessarily. Brow ridges and clavicles and hips 
are things that do have a sexual characteristic to it. They are oftentimes different between men and women on average. These things do have a correlation to sexual genetics, but the mistake that they do is assume that that's a black and white binary with literally no overlap whatsoever. You either have all the characteristics of a woman or you are a man. But unfortunately, that's basically as scientific as most of these people get. A lot of the time, the majority of the time, it's mostly just down to <coughs> vibes, gut feelings. Because in the psychology of a lot of people in this theory, you will instinctively know just by looking. You don't even have to do all yeah. that. Yeah, the best part about these people is they think that they could just tell who's who's trans and who's not. It's just, it's just really interesting. Advanced science or weird Q angle analysis. Just by looking, you know the truth. Basically boils down to, well, you're not feminine enough. Jennifer Maniston, okay? These famous celebrities, these fantasy. Did she call it, did she really call them, call her like Maniston? <coughs> what? Seriously, like, my ex was shaped like that. What the fuck? Saying that, like, a outwards, uh, an outwards turning, um, pubic area is, is, is a sign of being a man. Like, that is so fucking normal, it's not funny. What the hell? She's Girls fucking insane. After are really chicks with dicks, okay? In trans terminology, you could say that the people that they examine don't pass. And that's enough evidence. This even applies to historical characters. Where's the vagina bones? <laughs> yeah. As, as part of this conspiracy theory, the so weird. Cabal worshipping Baphomet have been around for centuries. This is not a recent phenomenon. For thousands of years, we as a society have been controlled by the transes. This means that every president, every first lady, every high ranking politician, every famous actor throughout all of world history has been trans including Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Churchill, Roosevelt, um, everyone, everyone is trans. This is Martha Washington, okay? There is nothing feminine about that, okay? But I should say, first ladies of the United States do have a dis- Everyone is trans. In everyone is trans! All numbers, or inverts. And this is where we need to go back- to Good old Michelle Bahamut. Obama. Michelle Obama is- oftentimes the target of this conspiracy theory, often seen as the first that people were aware of being a trans person, and one of the more obvious ones, unfortunately. And I'm sorry, Michelle, you don't deserve this. Your husband deserves to be tried in an international court, uh, but you don't deserve this. There's a few pictures of Michelle that are often brought out as evidence that something's going on. Pictures of her are usually the gateway transvestigation. It's the first one that people go, huh, well, hold on. Something doesn't look right. People think that her real name is Michael, and that Obama, if he is not trans, is then gay. And while this started with a joke from Joan Rivers, it now has evolved into a life of its own. A life that is more based in just pure racism. Because in these circles, there is a strong racial component. The standards presented here are obviously impossible for anyone to meet, because no one is a perfect carbon copy of the ideal woman or man. But the standards that are provided are often biased in favor of white women. A lot of the people who are transvestigated are often black, disproportionately so, I would say. Oftentimes being compared to being quarterbacks or elite athletes with a lot of muscle that they can just barely contain within their feminine outfits. Current female stars? Why, why, why are they all like just, they're just black. They're just, it's just black women. The people who are involved in this conspiracy theory are extraordinarily bigoted, not just against gay people and trans people, but against everyone who doesn't fit their very, very narrow worldview of how a person should be. The structure around the conspiracy theory is highly so towards LGBT people, but also black people, the Jews, everyone. Basically any group that you can come up with that isn't white and Christian will get back to the Christianity. But these people don't just target people who are rich and famous and powerful. They are the most common ones because they are kind of obsessed with finding pictures on the internet. And if you're not famous, odds are you're not gonna have pictures on the internet. Yeah. But sometimes people will post pictures that they've taken of strangers in the street, on the bus, in the subway. People just in their regular lives. 
and asking other people to transvestigate them. The default belief is that the world at large is dominated by these inverts doing their satanic bidding, but that on the local level, you're mostly safe. That's why you and your friends or family haven't actually encountered any of these inverts yourself. But some people have become so skeptical of the idea that anyone would be who they claim to be that they start seeing inverts everywhere. Some people are terrified that their local school council has been infiltrated by the inverts, targeting their children. That their library staff has been infiltrated by the inverts, culling information that is true and just and replacing it with perverse propaganda. For some people, it goes to the extreme level that everyone that they see is a secret trans person. Everyone around them isn't actually a real person, but instead a demonic entity that has been inverted and just looks like a real person. They have been replaced by the inverts and the transes. These people have basically become so skeptical of the people around them that they can't trust anything that anyone else says, for very, very few exceptions. This, I think, says something interesting philosophically. And this is why I want to talk very quickly about solipsism. Let's step back for a moment and have a little bit of a think. How do you know that other people exist? Or even the world itself? Picture, for example, that your brain might be in a vat and some mad scientist has wired electrodes. See, I love, I love this one because, and people hate my answer to it because, like, my answer is, like, it doesn't matter. Um, and then just like, oh, you're not playing the game right, basically, is the response I usually get. But, like, at the end of the day, why does that matter? What I perceive to be real is the only reality that I'll ever get to face. So, like, I, I just find that, I find that idea to be quite a pointless one. Parts of your brain myself. A highly advanced supercomputer is actually stimulating your brain to experience a complete world. How do you know that that's not actually happening right now? The things around you might just be impressions on your brain made by the supercomputer. In fact, how do you even know that you- Oh, I got killed by a slime. Consciousness. If you're a brain in a vat, you might be having a completely normal life with a normal family, but none of it would be real. You'd just be a brain in a vat. The point of this perspective is to point out that from the perspective of the brain, there is no way to know, but you can be sure of one thing. Solipsism is the philosophy of skepticism, mostly proposed and made famous by René Descartes. Descartes argues that doubt needs to be a foundational and important aspect of how we run our lives and think philosophically, because he argued that a lot of various arguments can be undermined and doubted. A lot of sources of knowledge might be taken for granted, but might actually be erroneous, even to the point of our own senses. You may have heard a friend speak when in actuality it was a stranger, you may have seen your friend walk across the bus station and you may have started waving to them only to see that they were actually not your friend and now you're just waving to a complete stranger. And Descartes right. actually has a similar theory as the brain the bad thing, but he talks about it in terms of his time. Imagine that an evil demon of utmost power and cunning has employed all his energies in order to fucking bin lorry. I shall think that the sky, the air, the earth, Colors, shapes, sounds, and all external things are merely the delusions of dreams which he has devised to ensnare my judgment. I shall consider myself as not having hands, or eyes, or flesh, or blood, or senses, but as falsely believing that I have all these things. Descartes argues that since you cannot be sure of any of these things, you cannot take them for granted. The only thing you can be sure about is your own thoughts. But the action of having the thoughts, you must exist. And this well, yeah. is where we get the term I think. I think, therefore, therefore, I am. Yeah. The only thing you can be completely 100% sure of is the fact that you are thinking. That is the foundation yeah. to which you can build other types of knowledge. But that is the only foundational truth that exists to him. And the thing is, if you are a brain in a vat or a demon is making a huge illusion for you, what does it matter? Would it change the way that you interact with the world? Would it change the way that you interact with other people? And if nothing changes, does it really matter? And solipsism as a philosophy is present in a lot of other philosophies, as it should. The idea of criticizing and having doubt and being skeptical of the world around you is something that I think is very foundational in how we can be people in the world. But you shouldn't assume that you are a brain in a vat, that a demon is in fact controlling your every senses. You shouldn't live your life as if that was the case, assuming that because it's a possibility and you can't be sure of anything, then you have to be the brain in the vat. That just makes no sense. But I think that this is what has happened to a lot of transvestigators. They think that the only people that they can be sure are real people, 
are the people that they have met in real life, the people that they've interacted with, the people that they have a close connection to. That's fucked. And so like, oh, so it's basically like the same sort of thing as um as flat earthers. They don't believe in something unless um unless they see it with their own eyes. There's certain. It's like um an em empiricist, is it? I can't remember between empirical and empirical. I think it's empiricist. That everyone else might be fake. Maybe not fake in the sense that a demon is making your brain think something, or that a mad scientist has hooked up you up to a supercomputer, but that some sort of demon has replaced a lot of people in your life, or primarily the world. Instead of I think therefore I am, cognito ergo sum, they are I am, therefore I sex. <laughs> Which I think tracks with how a lot of people here approach transvestigation. If you can't confirm that they're a real person and not an invert, then you have to assume that they are one. There's a condition here that I want to quickly mention called solipsism syndrome. Solipsism syndrome is a psychological condition that is a type of delusion. And I don't mean that in a cruel sense, I mean that in a literal sense. It can cause a person to believe that everyone else in the real world isn't actually real, that they are, in fact, a brain in a jar. But this is not a black and white binary. People can be affected by this in gradients. The syndrome most often affects people in isolation, severe isolation. But the people who are involved in transvestigation are isolated themselves, but in a slightly different way. Cult survivor Daniel Young writes about cults and how they spread on the internet. She writes, In traditional cults, the walls keep the world out, keep you in, because isolation is such a big part of programming. AI is the new commune wall. It keeps you in with your like-minded people, and it's almost impossible to get out. In addition to this, there's also an assumption of obviousness. The people who are involved in these Facebook groups primarily, and in the comments of YouTube videos that talk about transvestigation, there will be this air of like, well, of course the people that you bring up are trans. This person is obviously a trans. This person is obviously an MTF. It's, it's so plain, everyone could see it. But can you? I can't. These groups will spend very little time actually confirming their deductions and just going from these initial impressions of seeing a person's yeah. body or face one time. If they show multiple pictures of a person mm. to be investigated, they're almost always in bad- And that's the same thing about you that, that I was talking about yesterday. When it comes to that guy who was saying that, um, who was conflating the idea of a fetus being a baby. A fetus is not a baby. Um, it's not a baby. You are not killing a baby by having an abortion, you are um, you are removing a cluster of cells from your body. You are you, you could talk about the potential of human life, um, but it is important never to let them have that stable ground to stand on when you're talking to them, because they'll just go on from there. They will assume that they are correct, correct without having to be challenged on those views. They would. They think of those things as inherent truths. That's the problem. Positions or variations of the same. Self-confirming. Well, hold on. All right. Um, I'm just going to dance. Okay. Um, can I will be right back after this short break. Don't go anywhere. Or do other ways. Either way, I'll be right back after this break. <laughs>
Back again. Sorry for the wait. Let's get back into it. Transvestigations. Not every person looks the same in every fucking photograph, which is true. <laughs> but this is explained away by the fact that, of course, we as inverts are aware that people will want to spot us and see who we are. Inverts will hide their true identity from the general public by hiding parts of their body, by walking in certain ways, changing their voice, undergoing surgery, things like that. And it's because of this that sometimes their transvestigations don't hold up each and every time. A person that you might identify as a man might not have all the traits that you would typically associate with a man, but the only reason that you can't find them is because they're hiding it. They're actually hiding the truth by walking differently. So in this picture, you can't see their dick. In some of these pictures, well, you know, they're holding their arm over their crotch, so you can't see their dick there either. The consequence here is that there are only very, very narrow slices of attractive, acceptable womanhood. But I think that there's a reason why they do this analysis in the first place. That has nothing really to do with demons or trans people, but that has all to do with insecurity. <sighs> Yeah. <sighs> Hi everyone. You can talk a lot about various psychological conditions or about a philosophical doubt or skepticism, but I think the truth here is much, much simpler. Most of the people who are involved in this type of conspiracy theory posting are just deeply insecure about their own bodies and sexuality. While there's a pretty equal vibe on gender, depending on who is posting in these Facebook groups, most of the people who are most famous for doing so are women who compare the bodies of inverts with their own bodies. A video detailing how a person might be an invert might not look too dissimilar from the way that I look right now. A person who is basically clad off, showing as much skin as possible in order to show off their natural feminine beauty. And for a lot of it's people, the overcompensating idea. Sexuality, affirming that the people who they are attracted to are the most women, women who ever wummed. Basically, they want to make sure that they are the most heterosexual person that has ever existed. And sexuality does seem to be front and center in a lot of these communities. The people who comment on Taiwan's videos are oftentimes doing so in a weirdly flirtatious way. Basically saying that all of the people that you've shown off, they're not really attractive. They're not really sexy people. But you are, Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan. You're so sexy female. I respect that. I'm gonna admire it. What I think is happening here is projection. Projection is one of those terms that you hear thrown around a lot, but that almost no one actually know what they really mean. Mm. Well, as someone who took one term of psychology in uni and failed it, I'm going to tell you. Projection is the phenomenon of shifting negative traits or blame from yourself to someone else subconsciously seeing the flaws in yourself in someone else. Yeah. It means to shift the blame for internal discomfort to an external source. You're not insecure about the way you look. Everyone else is just ugly. It's a theory mostly developed by cigar sucker Sigmund Freud, but it's been around in a lot of other psychological thinkings before him. Freud argues that it can manifest itself as a cheating wife accusing her husband of cheating on her, or when those who feel compulsions to steal fear that they're going to be stolen from themselves. In terms of appearance, it can well, yeah, see, it's, it's the idea. It's it's basically putting it's it's the it's the phenomenon of putting yourself in someone else's shoes. At the end of the day, you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes, um, to like try and understand where another person's coming from. That's why you'll find that a lot of these things, a lot of these people, tend to, um. Like when when someone's projecting, when you see a conservative talk about how um, you know leftists just want to like rule the world and control everything and take everyone's money, that's just literally them putting their shoes in our positions and doing and extrapolating what they would do in our situation. So it's important to understand that if someone is projecting. That doesn't mean that they are a bad person or they would do those things that they're saying that you're doing. They are looking at themselves, finding the worst parts about themselves, and projecting that onto another person. Um, like, you got to understand the context behind these things. It's, not as, it's always more complicated at the end of the day. It manifests as people being insecure about traits about their own body, who then accuse others of having that trait and that trait being negative. 
If a person goes around telling other people that they're fat all the time, they're most likely insecure about being fat themselves. Yeah. And while most of the things that he's... And ever... they're not necessarily fat, they're just insecure about their weight. Understanding that point of thing is like... You gotta make sure that you don't come off with a really, like, shallow level of understanding of projection at the end of the day. I just want to double down on that. ...are kind of bullshit. I do think that he's onto something here. I do think that a lot of people have some sort of internal insecurity, and they believe that other people have the flaw that you're concerned about. If I was to yes. be a complete asshole, I could do a transvestigation on Tywin Lannister, and say that by her own metrics, she should be classified as a man. Projection often happens in Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or BPD, but it can happen to anyone. Everyone basically can do it, like, a little bit. And it happens most often when people are put through some sort of crisis. But not just a personal crisis. It can actually happen in political crises and other mainstream crises as well. Projection is a defense mechanism. And what it does is it defends you against your own insecurities, your own self-doubt, by basically saying that you are perfect. It's everyone else that's the problem. Usually the impulse to do that is kept in check. We have self-reflection and self-insight. But during a personal crisis, that can be overridden. And suddenly you can start seeing problems everywhere else, except with yourself. Problems that, to be fair, might not even be real problems, but only problems that you think are problems. And I think they do it because they- See, this is my problem though, with um, using the, I, the concept of um, uh, projection to base an argument on. You need to remember that this is like the basis of empathy and the way that empathy works, like the way that we actually communicate and think about people. This is how we process um, the way other people act. This is how we understand the world around us. It's not something which like is a negative thing. Yes, you had more clothes on earlier see some part of the faces and bodies of celebrities in themselves and it gives them so much internal anguish and discomfort that they have no way to cope with that. They can't accept the fact that someone can be successful and powerful and attractive with a trait that they have deemed wrong, impure, sexed wrongly. And so they believe that the only reason that they can get away with it is because they're really liars. And projection can reinforce that negative emotion because you don't have to deal with it. In fact, it gives you pleasure to be able to vent and be angry at that discomfortable feeling against someone else. And therefore, that negative emotion can go stronger. It can become reinforced and get worse and worse over time until suddenly you start seeing perfectly attractive people in the world and start saying that they have man face. I think this is another reason why a lot of transvestigators don't go super into the reasoning why people- It's a problem with the video itself, I think. Oh! Why no. they sell their soul to the devil for there we go. a big sense of success. Why would they- I am like exquisite. It doesn't really matter to them, because it's not really about that. It's more about reinforcing their own very outdated self-image. And I also think yeah. that's a reason why they don't actually talk too much about actual real-life trans people. Most of the time, they talk about cis women. But hello, the dolls are right here and we're ample opportunity to make fun of. Where can you make fun of me? In fact, they only really talk about real life trans people if they've been in the media a significant amount, if they're on people's mind, and especially if that trans person has been viewed as attractive. A while ago, Elliot Page came out as trans. Good for him. We stand. And during that time, a lot of people said, oh shit, Elliot got ripped and is hot as hell. It weirdly became a weird news story. And the people in the transvestigation space got really uncomfortable by this. How can you demean and humiliate a person in your own mind by calling them trans if they're openly trans? Well, they have a solution for that, and that is to say that they're doubly trans. <laughs> Elliot Page, they claim, is an MTFTM. A what? A, a what? Yeah, personality disorders coming from trauma at some point. Yeah. I Wait, wait, wait. So, male to female to male. <laughs> this is a flat earth theory. This is how this is how people just like just convince themselves into ideas. Person who has amazing twice, but they're not insecure about us. The heterosexual men in this space are not attracted to us. Male they to female to, to male. To them, what the and fuck? unfortunately to a lot of society, we are deeply unsexy individuals. Which is fine. You know, not everyone has to find us sexy but it becomes the norm. It is not the norm to not want to be attracted to occasional supermodels, Victoria's Secrets. <gasps> In fact, I would say that the biggest determination Trademark, yeah. whether or not they will see a person as trans or not 
is attractiveness. If people find a person attractive, odds are that they're not even going to be up for transvestigation in the first place. Every single picture that's posted in these transvestigation spaces are all from bad angles, bad lighting, from weird poses that people do, weird grimaces. Everyone takes bad photographs, including celebrities, and in some of them they look unattractive. Or they might just be old, something that makes these people completely unfuckable. And it seems to me that that seems to be the biggest indicator here. And I think this is why <laughs> so so the attractiveness of these people, rather that's, than pointing that's out definitely a fair, traits, fair thing it's to more feel. important that a person is looking ugly than as a person looking the other sex. But for many of these people, those two things are the same thing. Looking cross-sexed is by far the most unattractive thing in the world for some of these people. And it works very effectively as a way to discount the successes of famous or How many politically important days? people. Elliot Page isn't famous because he's Not a good actor day. and because he's done like LGBT activism. No, he is because he's an invert. Gary Brennan isn't actually smart as an archivist. It's the devil who has given him all those details. In fact, this goes so far. So, like, it turns out, turns out, God doesn't give um, people like gifts in life, right? It, it's the devil that gives people gifts, and I guess God just punishes people. Speaking of inverts, this this definitely sounds very inverted when it comes to the idea of uh, Christianity. You know what I mean? Just seems a little bit off to me, but yeah. Boo. Yeah, that my god is better than your god. <laughs> yeah. As to some people theorizing that some celebrities were replaced at some point in their life. That they used to be real when they were young, but were replaced at some point. The differing line seems to be the point at which they stopped being successful or attractive. These people want more than anything the permission to be horny on main to express their sexuality in a way that they maybe don't feel that they can otherwise. But I think that's the reason they use trans terminology. The recent rise and prominence of trans people in the public eye, I think has led a lot of people to re-examine their own sexuality. I've had multiple people send me emails being like, like I'm straight, but like I would. And I'm like, okay. People who are so deeply entrenched to a simple version of their own sexuality that they can't even comprehend the idea of being attracted to someone with even slightly masculine features to the point where yeah. any and all masculine features is a complete disbarment. From punish, even punish him. Punish it like. Uh, here's the question though: Why, why, why? Of of all things to hate people for and call out a conspiracy for, why, like, why do you even need that? Why do people even need that? Be attractive. So while I do think that there is some sort of ideological framework here, I think it's mostly just rooted in insecurity individual anxiety about other people. While this entire conspiracy theory is bigoted and racist and transphobic, it is, above all, heterosexual. But it is another thing as well. Heterosexual. It's Christian. Uh. A really large part of this conspiracy theory has to do with the spiritual element. The idea of individual purity. Purity as a theme. The heteros aren't okay. Especially talking about whether or not a person can lose their purity by changing who they are. A core part of the belief here is that the people who are inverts have a deep moral failing within them. And they can see this moral failing in many other aspects of their life as well. This is actually a lot more common in the smaller, more fringe areas of this community. Taiwan here is actually kind of smart because he doesn't dig in that much into really? the ideas of the I don't really feel bad for Taiwan them. focuses on the scientific arguments, such as flared hips and I just feel more confused. Angles, like that. But on the edges of this ideology, there are people who believe in secret signs and numerology. People who say certain phrases or do certain movements do them as a part of religious argumentation. And they are religious. Holy shit, signs. it gets deeper and fucking deeper. It's very much tainted by. I, I, I need to get. I need to react to some of this stuff, seriously. Spiritualism and neo pagan folk stuff. The religion at the core here is Christianity. Zero Father online. Promise to us. Hello, Satan Zero. Want that to happen. Or I Satan size 95. First time chatter. Welcome. He wants this to be his kingdom, which it basically is already, really. WTF? Uh, are you so doing? In, and you can see it's a uh, transgender. And what is this all about? The Baphomet. Why? Baphomet is, is a transgender, system? apparently. Yeah, a transgender is trans now a the is now a noun and a verb. Reasons of why inverts do the things that they do, but I fully believe that she believes that. She is one of the most popular posters, I think, for a reason, because she acts as a sort of catch-all tent. She doesn't scare you away with embrace Jesus Christ to defeat the evil transsexual inverts. Rather, she just points out that 
celebrities can sometimes have female traits. And that acts as a sort of opening, a gateway. I don't know. I don't know the history of Bahamut. I'm, I'm not big on that stuff because, like, once I realized that, that, um, once I realized that all of, um, uh, demonology is just, is basically just, um, Christian bullshit, um, or like, you know, old school Christian bullshit, like, I sort of, like, lost interest in it. <laughs> I thought it was cool, but yeah, not anymore. And I'm just like, meh, these days. Doesn't, doesn't really worry me as much. A very weird gateway, but a gateway nonetheless. These sodomized, these entities all try to program us with this filthy degeneracy. Now, Jesus, in all his glory, is not actually that relevant within the theory itself, but rather the concept of purity. Remember how we talked about purity earlier? Yeah, on, the devil's advocate position. How trans yeah. people are the epitome of corruption and lack. And that's why, and that's why the devil is um, is necessary. You need to have a devil's advocate within your mind in order to um, in order to question your faith and question uh, the world around you and to learn and grow. You know, become creators. There is no there's no growth without adversity in some way, like in the in the way of um, you know weightlifting and that sort of stuff. I'm not saying like oh God has a plan for everything when you when your kid dies of cancer. No, I'm not talking about that bullshit. I'm just talking in a general sense. Ooh. Wait, did we get new stuff? Wait, what the fuck is this? Critical damage plus thirty three percent. What can we do that critical damage chance though? Critical damage going up. Nah. Nah. Nah, these are good. Too many de too many devils inherently evil or bad things happen for them, so hell is internal punishment. Yeah, but my god doesn't have hell, so he's be my 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 god beats the shit beats the hell out of your god. God needed young compost for his garden. No, like um, what what like he need he needed children hands for his for his um for his orphan for his orphan grinder. Purity, which is reflected in us being trans people. This is based on the idea that you should be as God has created you to be, and any manipulation of I am. that image is against God. And so, being trans, basically taking charge of your own body and changing it all the way however you want it to, goes against but God's no. No, God, God, God made me trans like this. If God, if God exists, then He made me trans. So, like, at what point does the does does it and while come back? Transness has become sort of the main target of this conspiracy theory. There's a lot of other issues that are also. Impure. Oh yeah, they can be things like minor surgery. I mean, I, we can all agree on that. All that of part, these things, I think, they claim, are part of the demon's greater plan. To corrupt who we are supposed to be hygiene. as human uh, beings. I don't know, I like hygiene. Which in their view, are vessels of a perfect divine soul. And the more we change our exterior, the more we corrupt that soul. I broke all ties with the person I was with for four years, for many reasons. But one being we do. because she got breast implants. She just couldn't see how it was an abomination to her body. In fact, I would almost categorize this as an back to basics Christianity, because they also reject Basically, all forms of organized religion, most Christian denominations, especially the Catholic Church, are, True. of course, contributors to the great lie. Whoa, that was close. Real religion, Almost many died then. Claim is something that should be innately part of yourself and your close community. Depending on how extreme you are with this, even some forms of advanced technology or living in cities I might die. can also contribute to the corruption of who you are. All of this has a few political goals in mind. They all guide you towards one central direction. People have become too complicated. Dan Olsen made a video about Flat Earth, which I think is amazing that you should definitely watch. He explains that a lot of people who believe in Flat Earth do so because they are confused about the state of the world. The world itself has become too complicated and they are looking to unexplain it. They want to simplify the world. They are trying to build a Flat Earth. Transvestigators are similar. But they argue that people. Oh, so close! Back the days when males liked vaginas. The world would be fine. <laughs> Stop insulting my partner. If it wasn't for those pesky humans coming along and ruining everything, this is why they have an 
overly simple explanation of sex and sexual characteristics. Overly simplistic biology and Q angles is basically the flat earth of a lot of people in this theory. And I think it's a bit scary because this line of thinking, talking about purity and essences and overly simplistic views about your own body, that is the natural, albeit extreme, consequence of a lot of basic transphobic thinking. They all lead to the similar political goal of creating two static and completely separate sexed categories for people to yeah. exist within. Something to be maintained by force. The people who are involved in this ideology are deeply, deeply bigoted, specifically against LGBT people or people who they believe have upended the traditional gender order. This does not just include LGBT people, by the way, this includes women who want to work, men who don't want to work, people who do not fit in to the extraordinarily patriarchal societal norm that a lot of people want to break out of. It's an extreme, spiritual, and pseudo-fascist version of wanting to maintain it's a patriarchal shit. worldview. It's just Nazi shit. And this is another reason why I think that they target mostly women. It's not just insecurity, but it's because they are successful women. They believe, of course, that women should have rights and have autonomy, but that autonomy should only exist within a hyper-women role and cannot overlap with any masculine interests. It is a group of people who want to simplify human relations and human identity. They want to build a new binary. In this video, we talked a lot about biomarkers and sex and many other things, a lot of which are kind of complicated. You might even start thinking, is sex even real? Well, you're going to love my sponsor who can make sure that you uh, can confirm that your sex is real, for real. Uh, it's Adam and Eve. They make, they make sex toys. By using the link in my description, you get access to 50% off one item, plus free shipping in the US and Canada. Adam and Eve ships you your toys discreetly and with a 90 day return policy which is good if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it doesn't make your sex real enough, I, I guess. Uh, they also donate a portion of their income to fighting HIV throughout the world, which is... Honestly, I much prefer real sex than I do virtual sex. Good. And if that sounds something that's up your uh, alley or up your whatever, uh, then uh, please consider Adam and Eve. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. Sorry about it taking a bit of time to get out there. Uh, I've been busy with a lot of other stuff and I got COVID and it took me a long time to get back into it. Um, I've also been working on the podcast. So you, if you want to listen to me talking about medical history, that's you can you can do that uh, on LeechFest. Uh, should be a link in on the screen right now. I've also been busy running for office here in Sweden. I haven't really made a video about it, uh, which I probably should have. Oh, but she won. I'm technically an elected representative now. So Yay! you are going to bully me and not just for being a YouTuber. If you like this video and you would like to see more, I heavily recommend, uh, selfishly, of course, uh, that you <laughs> that you follow me on Patreon. But that's pretty cool. So yeah, support the original creator. This is Mia Mulder. She's pretty awesome. Like she may Oh, why am I not subscribed? What the fuck? I swear I was subscribed. All right, all right, all right. Hosa for life. What did you send me? To the transgender community. I'm oh no! You fucking send me. You sent me think before you sleep, you fuck! This is, this is just gonna be painful. More than willing to give you an audience, but I have some conditions. You must admit that Hannah Gatsby is not funny. What? That, that is a dog made entirely out of crayons. <laughs> I don't need that! <laughs> ha ha ha. Wasn't that funny. Gee, yeah. if she didn't constantly reassure me that she's a good comedian, I might have forgotten to laugh there. That's how I'm going oh, to meet- Oh, for fuck's sake, dude. That's the point of the joke. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's fucking hilarious. What the fuck? Your expectations by adjusting them for you now. <laughs> So they are exactly what you're gonna get. And then I'll meet them and you go, she's very good. And yes, I am, but I cheat. Is that a laugh track in the back? You can fucking see her face. Her facial expressions and everything. Maybe it's because I, lo I love my housemate so much. I, I see a lot of him in her. 
It's just, just, just fucking love. I love this. I love. I Around, love. Or does she have a sign telling the audience when to laugh, like they do on game shows and sitcoms? Because oh I gosh. cannot fathom that people. What does this guy's laugh sound like? Do you reckon? How do you reckon this guy laughs? Listen to his voice for a bit and tell me what you think. I think this is actually funny, and trust me, it's not any better in context. Is it um, um, like this? Do you reckon he laughs like this? Um. Well, no shit. She's fucking hilarious. That's how he laughs. Though my expectations were met, Dave Chappelle made a very bold statement calling out Hannah Gatsby as not funny. Bikini that she wore for the first time today. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I well, think. Well, after watching both of her Netflix specials, Nanette and Douglas, which had a runtime of over two hours, I did not laugh out loud once. The best she got out of me was a slight smirk from this joke here. Now, fair warning, my observations will be about Americans, which is broadly speaking you lot, right? So, and, and sorry, but making fun of Americans is still technically punching up, although that window is closing. Um... <laughs> That was her <laughs> best joke out of two hours. And don't give me the, you don't think she's funny because she has different political beliefs. That's what? not the case. Laughter. No, 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 you don't think she's funny because you just don't have a sense of humor. I don't know, like, your political beliefs are shit, but like, oh my gosh, this is annoying that it does this. Why do you, why did they make it like this? Why did they make it like this? Yeah, you you don't you don't like her because you're fucking you have no sense of humor. You suck. You literally suck. I I don't think he does either. I I really don't. I really don't. Voluntary. If someone says something really funny, you I will swear laugh that I've seen this video not. before. That's why have I reacted like to this already? You laugh, you lose challenges on YouTube. I've also featured comedians on my channel like Veer Das, who I very much disagree with on certain issues. Yet when he told jokes about those very things, I still laughed. There's a reason why woke I don't believe you. aren't funny, and there's a reason Picks why woke didn't television happen. shows and woke movies aren't good. It's because the people who create this stuff don't care about the audience. Allow me to elaborate more, but first, no! if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps <laughs> and me to the and our 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 Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages this is, can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget Why to support would you do me this on to me, Jose? Links to my Why Odyssey would you fucking do this to me? And my Minds page can be found in the description as well. Alright, since people have already talked about Amy Schumer's gross genital comedy and her not being funny like a million times, I've decided to use Hannah Gatsby to make my points. For those of you who don't know, Hannah Gatsby is an art graduate from Australia who aired out a little drama between her, Netflix, and Dave Chappelle on Instagram. Now that you're all caught up, let's continue talking about why she's not funny and why these woke yeah. shows keep failing. Well, I mean, it does add, add like, a, another layer of um, um, funniness for me personally to come from that perspective because, like, I can really relate. Hannah, yeah, but... but be, because woman, all all women are the same. There's only two genders and two races. Um, only two genders, two races, two sexualities, two of everything. Like there's just cishet white male, and political. They're all the same because if it's not a cishet white male, it's a political. Exhibit A. And it will also include a fair <clears throat> dose. And uh, what I call a gentle and very good-natured needling of the patriarchy. So that is in there. A good-natured so needling. Important. I like that. It's very important that you expect that because it is there. And if that's not your thing, leave. I've given you plenty <laughs> of warning. Rule number one of building a huge audience. Don't alienate a large portion of people by telling them to not watch your show. 
The woke crowd seems to love doing this by saying, If you don't like it, don't watch. Or, This show is not for you. Every time... Something like, If you don't like it, leave? Is, is that what is that what you're saying is bad? Hmm. One of their awful hmm. shows okay. fails. Clearly, Hannah's Netflix specials were not made with the audience and potential audience in mind because they aren't good. That being said, I think her special Douglas best illustrates how little she is actually interested in what the audience's preferences are. Here's right. how that special starts. So that's what's going to happen before the show even begins, right? I'm going to give you a very right. detailed blow-by-blow -blow description of exactly how the show is going to unfold. Now, this setting of expectations does go on a bit. I've had to cut the actual show in order to fit it in. Yes, that's what everyone wants when they go to a comedy performance, a syllabus that spoils all the jokes. This was a very college professor way of writing a comedy special, but okay. There are two major problems with this design. One, people hate <laughs> this, spoilers. This design! Remember back in 2019 you, when everyone you, and... You must, you must construct your comedy in a certain way to learn to be honey. Uh, uh, uh. Marvel was like, seriously, we will kill you if you spoil Avengers Endgame. Remember how big of a deal it was when Mark Ruffalo spoiled Infinity War? Badly Wait till you see this next one. Nope. I don't remember that at all. Did you you want to know why you want to know why I uh, didn't didn't know about that didn't hear about that you want to know uh, a little bit uh, you know a secret I'll tell you a secret I'll tell you a secret I don't give a fuck about Marvel nobody cares about your fucking stupid like Marvel movies seriously everybody does do do do, 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 do. do. not everybody no. Is that? No. Alien, whatever. That is pretty Can funny. Can we rewind that part? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Someone fucking love that. Someone in the comments said that he actually spoiled Endgame during this interview as well. But the point is, people don't like spoilers. This was a particularly stupid move from Hannah, because getting people to laugh is all about surprise. Unless I've already heard the joke and approved of it in the past, if I can predict what you're going to say, it's and not funny. And approved of- like, Unless I've already heard the joke and approved it- this is fucking amazing. People already died in the first few. Why? Come on. What? People die? That's not a spoiler. How is that a spoiler? This joke. And you also need to expect one Louis C.K. joke. Now, I only have one joke. That wasn't it, by the way. The show hasn't started. We're still in the prelude. The one joke, it's very good. I only need one. It's a good, it was a good joke. It was a day off. I'm so solid. One Louis C.K. joke. It's a mic drop moment. The interesting thing about the Louis C.K. joke is that it happens very late in the show. So late you will have forgotten that I told you to expect a Louis C.K. joke. There's <laughs> Hannah kissing her own ass again. There's no better How sign of someone you? who's bad at something than a person you, who constantly insists Link that they are Link this guy again. Unfortunately, the Louis C.K. joke is not YouTube friendly, Hosa fucking hates so I can't me. show it. However, I can tell you that it was totally expected because she said it was in the show and then challenged me by saying I would forget about it. Guess uh. what? I didn't forget. And when it does finally no, show up, this great Louis C.K. joke at the end... This guy's like voice seconds, is fucking disgusting. I hate this guy. During the instant that she said the joke, it would completely fly over your head. The second problem with this intro is a problem that has plagued the entertainment industry for years, which is stories that include no intro hook. A hook is something that the audience will find interesting. There are oh my gosh. Ways to hook an audience depending on the type of entertainment media mm -hmm. that you're using to convey your message. Mm -hmm. But Hannah mm -hmm. spends the first 14 minutes of the special introducing it herself forget. and spoiling all of her jokes. This is not entertaining. That's it. That's the show. That's everything you can expect. This is this is this is Squidward like if he was a um movie what do you call them? Um bloody <sighs> critic. If, if it was a fucking movie critic. Fucking Expectations hell. have been set, so the show starts now. It should have started when you walked out on stage. This situation oh my gosh, you fucking hell. This was actually my biggest issue with it. This is a guy this is a guy who is like I'm just this is the sort of guy who would be seething in the front row, but he wouldn't say anything, but he like writes down all of the things he wanted to heckle her with and then just makes a video about it later. Oh yeah, he probably doesn't understand irony either. 
I know. The first 20 minutes of that movie was a giant exposition dump where nothing entertaining occurs until Paul puts his hand into a box. Seriously, I've gotten so pissed at movies doing this that I will actually set a timer to see how long it takes for the movie to start. I believe the first Venom movie was the worst offender because it didn't start until almost half the movie was over. But it's especially annoying in this case with a story like Dune that has a 600 page manuscript that you can just cheat off of. Oh yeah. There's a reason why Frank Herbert started the book with the scene where Paul puts his hand into a box. It's called an intro hook. You need to make the audience care about your story before you dump a bunch of information on them about how your world works. Telling the audience, no seriously you need to memorize all this stuff before you have earned an interesting scene. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This guy takes a fucking joke and absolutely murders it like and not in a fucking good way either this is this is the this is the this is in a like oh uh, yeah apparently i i really enjoyed D dune myself but yeah i don't know i don't care enough about it to defend its honor Well, yeah, obviously. Is selfish writing. The great thing about putting your hand into a box is that people can understand that scene without tons of backstory. So he does. So basically, the backstory confuses him. Um, so he prefers it when like hand go hand. If if hand don't go in box, then it's too confusing for this man. Hand must go in box. That's it. If hand no go in box, then movie no good. Hand must go in box. World building. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, the things he's complaining about, some movies do that, but, like, come on. Come on, guys. Let's, uh... Not be complete idiots here. Not to say the movie didn't oh, do yeah. a good job with that moment. It's actually a really good scene with a very good theatrical depiction of the Jedi mind control thing they call the voice but the director should have started with it. Currently, I think it's the best film depiction of Dune so far, but when you don't start with interesting stuff, people will ignore the exposition dump you gave them at the start, so they will find the rest of the movie confusing. Speaking of confusion, that brings me to my next point about Hannah Gatsby's woke comedy specials. Multiple times during- But you're supposed to forget about it and not think too deeply about it. That's part of the joke. If you're thinking too deeply about it, like, to be fair, this jo the Hannah Gatsby's joke was at his expense, and he didn't even realize it. In her specials, her jokes are so poorly thought out that she has to explain them to the audience. <laughs> you know, for a long time I knew more facts about unicorns than I did about lesbians. <laughs> Another reason I struggled with co There are no facts about unicorns. If you have to explain the joke, it's not funny. The problem with this joke is that it can be easily interpreted multiple ways that kill the humor. It's possible to have facts about fictional characters. For example, this motherfucker, this motherfucker's, um, this, uh, this this motherfucker is angry that uh, he didn't hear any facts about mermaids from Hannah Gadsby. What the fuck? Come on, man. Come on. You can't be fucking serious. What the hell? Oh. No. You sorry, just uh, figuring out this shit, and then there we go. Now we got it. Now we're fucking cooking with butter, which is a thing apparently. Unicorns are fictional horses. Fact. Or if you want to be super intellectual, you could. This has got to be a fucking joke. This guy, this motherfucker is not serious. He can't be fucking serious at this point. He's literally... His motherfucker's literally like... Yeah. The, the, the joke... The joke was... The, 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 the joke wasn't factual enough. She didn't say that unicorns were fictional during the joke. And then she did say that they were... But it, it's confusing because too much dialogue have interpreted it as the old definition of unicorn, 
which is an animal with a single horn like a rhino. So then the joke would completely fall flat because rhinos are real. Here's another what? example of Hannah explaining her joke. You just explained the joke to make it not funny. Like, she didn't explain the joke, you just did. But the problem is you didn't understand that that ex that whole explanation, right, that you made was the fucking joke. It was based on the idea that people already know these things about the <laughs> unicorns. And it was the, the the it was the it was a joke which was based on absurdity. The absurdity of the idea that we live in a world where talking about unicorns as if they exist. It's pointing out the flaws in the way that we are looking at the situation. Like that's the joke. But you can't get that joke because you're so caught up on like the reality of the situation versus like understanding um, anything more meta than that. You you're unable to understand anything more meta than mermaids no real. She knows she she said that mermaids are not real. That's not funny. I mean like the fact that they're not real and that we're talking about them as if they are, that's the joke. And if you're not un able to understand that, like uh, I don't know what to do for you, man. Like you I think you're too far ga gone at this point. Like that's just some fucking cringe ass shit. Holy fuck. That's just crazy. Joke. But here's the thing, I've never met a joke that I haven't wanted to call back. I've never met a joke. G'day. <laughs> met a Come on! Met a joke. That's a pun. Catch up. This joke was so intellectual that either I am just too stupid to get it, or it was a really bad pun. Either way, if you have written a joke that is so intellectual, Oh my fucking gosh. Posey, you're gonna kill me. You're actually going to fucking kill me with this shit. Yes, it was a bad pun. And it was making fun of me meta humor. Oh fuck. Holy shit. This guy has no depth. This guy is the kiddie pool. Holy shit. And, and that's okay, you don't have to enjoy good humour if you don't want to. I just don't understand why you wouldn't want to enjoy life. I just, no, I just want to yeet myself at this point. This guy just, this this guy is, is like, what's the opposite of an antidepressant? It's like, whatever that is. Actual, ...that it alienates a large portion of your audience then you need to rewrite it. But people like Hannah are not going to get that because they actively avoid or ignore criticism. For example, people criticized Hannah's first Netflix special on the net for being a lecture. And then with said jousting stick, I'm going to say- I don't understand about that. I don't understand that, by the way. Like, I don't- I-, I... How is it a- how is it a lecture? I- I- can somebody explain that to me? Because I don't- I didn't actually get that from it. I, I found it to be, like, a funny comedy special. Like, how was it a lecture? I, I don't know why you are like this, but... Stop it. Get some help. This is, this is, this is, this is cringe. You, you are being cringe. <sighs> Like, I think that he's joking here. I think he's trying to do the joking. But his jokes are indistinguishable from, like, my old, like, my old maths tutor. My, my old maths lecturer from, like, uni. Learning about computational uh, mathematics. Like, that's how interesting his voice is. 
What about tearing my hate as a new asshole? Yep, quick as you like. Brand spanking new. And the way that I'll do that is by doing exactly what my haters accused me of doing, which is lecturing you. So in the middle of the show, I'm giving you a big old lecture. This is a valid criticism of that special, because a vast portion of it contains zero jokes, and it was written that way on purpose. Like a vast section? Do you mean the part towards the end where you're supposed to feel uncomfortable and she says, like, this, this is, like, important? Interesting how men get so uncomfortable when women start talking about, like, actual real shit. Mm. What do I call it in here? The mm. best part about this criticism is that it's not political. It's not, I don't agree with that joke you said because I have different politics. Instead, it's a critique of her writing technique, which means it's something that applies to every comedian. But instead of listening to that criticism, she leans into it and makes the terrible mistake of purposely have layers. her second special like a lecture. You want a lecture? I'll give you a fucking lecture. This is a lecture. I can't imagine doing that. You say you have tons of people telling you that this is bad design for a comedy show, so you provide them more of a thing that they don't Interesting that he cut off just before everyone like cheered and enjoyed it and laughed. Like She's making fun of the haters. I... The double standards, honestly, are quite interesting. Oh, wait, what? Oh, okay. Like, which is strange because you said in the intro that you were there to change minds. Allow me to tell you a personal story. After my uh... second year on YouTube, a lot of people were like, Wow, your channel is like 20 times bigger than it was last year. The reason it grew so fast is because tons of people told me what I was doing wrong, and I changed my behavior. What I didn't do was have a ton of people tell me they don't want their comedy special to be a lecture, followed by me introing my next special with a syllabus and ending with a PowerPoint presentation. But you're not a comedian, though. You're not a comedian, though. Like, it's her job to do that. That makes absolutely no sense. What is he talking about? Jen, because when you care about people, you'll memorize their preferences, and you'll also try to act out those preferences with the best possible interpretation. But instead of doing that, and this is why the woke crowd continues to remain as terrible writers, instead of doing that, they play the victim. What? I am not a victim. Well, that certainly should be easy to disprove. Oh, look, I found this Instagram post with Hannah playing the victim card, and it only took me like 10 seconds. Hey, Ted Sir. Hey, Ted Sarandos, a quick note to let you know that I would prefer if you didn't drag my name into your mess. Now I have to deal with even more of the hate and anger that Dave Chappelle's fans like to unleash on me every time Dave gets $20 million to process his emotionally stunted partial worldview. You didn't pay me nearly enough to deal with the real-world consequences of the hate speech dog whistling you refused to acknowledge, Ted. Fuck you and your immoral algorithm cult. I do shits with more backbone than you. That's just a joke. Ho definitely didn't cross a line because you just told the world there isn't one. How is that playing the victim? Explain. Randos, just a quick note to let you know that I would prefer if you didn't drag my name into your mess. Now I have to deal with even more hate and anger that Dave Chappelle's fans like to unleash on me every time Dave gets $20 million to process his emotionally stunted, partial worldview. You didn't pay me nearly enough to deal with the real-world consequences of the hate speech dog whistling you refused to acknowledge. But mm -hmm. I thought these were just jokes. It was certainly just a joke when you made two specials bashing straight white men. Now, if in that bit you find yourself offended by anything I say in the joke section, please just remember... It's the difference between punching up and punching down, dude. But that's comedy. That's like one of the basics of comedy. Like, who, who gives a fuck? Yeah, who gives a fuck if, like, white men get offended? Um... I don't really care. Why the fuck should I care about that? What the fuck are you talking about? It's weirdo insult shit. 
they are just jokes. Even if you find yourself surrounded by people who are laughing at something you find objectionable. But really, what about the, the gamer? weirdest thing about this statement from no, Anna the gamer on Instagram is the most vulnerable is that she person. spent the entirety of the comedy special Douglas talking about how much she loves hate. And look, first of all, it doesn't bother me, right? This doesn't bother me. Look, look, I've still got the loud stick. I don't feel threatened. In fact, I, I like the hate. And again. So naturally, the way that we deal with online hate is going to differ. Personally, I like to snack on it. <laughs> and if you thought we were done, you'd be wrong. I believe she actually says she she's she's making jokes at a comedy show, dude. I I don't know what to say at this point. Like you're you're just you're just like the biggest snowflake. I I think that's it. I think it's just you are just a the biggest snowflake in existence. You can't take a joke just like everyone else in the fucking in in your fucking sphere. He likes hate four or five times during the special. I won't show all of them, but here's one last example. I've only been telling this material one room at a time and the hate is already trickling in and it is targeted and it is venomous. But it doesn't bother me. Like, it, just don't worry about it. Like, I snack on it. Mm, no, no, no. It's really it's fine. I find it really strange that someone who says she loves hate so much that she would snack on it between meals would be so opposed to an event that would bring her more of a thing that she loves. I mean, I don't get offended when people offer me pizza. I love pizza. It's a joke, dude. It's called sarcasm. I was right. I called it. He doesn't understand sarcasm. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Hannah doesn't just say so that she likes hate. She says she actively pokes the bear to get more of it. At the end of that story, I'm going to do a little bit of what I call hate baiting. It's where I bait my haters. It's a very complex idea. Now, the way that I'll do that is I will just say a thing. And I will make no fucking effort to make it funny. You mean like the whole show? Anyway, this Instagram post is not the only time that Hannah plays victim. You mean like the whole show? Special oh, Douglas fucking hell. as well, which comes right after the comedy special Nanette, where she said she's not a victim. I have autism. Why would she mention this? If you are brave enough to make it through the one hour and 12 minute special, you'll find that pretty much none of the jokes are enhanced by knowing that, except for a quick joke she tells about vaccines. Which is strange because she states that the whole show is centered around that particular mental condition. It should make the show funnier, but so many- Fucking hell. You called it Sunsword, like, these guys don't, just don't understand, like, uh, neuro atypical, like, neurodivergent uh, humor. Doesn't, uh, fucking hell, it doesn't understand autism. It, it, even though, like, it's quite possible that he has some form of uh, neurodivergency himself. Like, pe people, y'all, y'all need to get diagnosed. Like, this, don't end up like this guy. You don't want to. You don't want to end up like this guy. Just trust me on this one. Many of her jokes are told in a way that makes that information unnecessary. For example, she talks about a teacher she had as a child and describes a situation where she asked dumb questions in class. And she said, imagine a box. And I could do that. I was gifted to a point. Visual thinker, good box, solid, three-dimensional, nothing fancy, but there. <laughs> and then she said... See, that there. That, that joke... Right then, right? I need you to understand this. That is, like... The fact that she has autism makes that joke funnier, and I don't know how to explain that in any other way than to say, oh, fucking hell, I don't know how to explain it to someone who's neurotypical. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's in the way that the joke is spoken, just the way that there's the complete and utter disdain towards like neuro ne neurotypical um, behavior, and and it, it's it it is the it is observational humor from the perspective of someone with uh, neurodivergency. It, it makes sense to just makes sense. I would love to be able to explain it better than that, but uh, it is it is a hard thing to explain. Preposition is a word that explains your relationship to the box. But I had a question. 
I said, am I? I don't understand the lecture style thing though. Like I find, I found the entire thing engaging and fun. I didn't actually find it to be a, a lecture, so to speak. Like I don't understand why people called it a lecture and not comedy. I don't, I, I don't understand that part. It doesn't make sense to me. At all. Made of box. Have you ever taught children before? Kids say things like that all the time. That doesn't really have much to do with autism. So did you? Wait a second, what? I made of box. <laughs> have you ever taught children before? Kids say things like that all the time. That doesn't really have much to do with autism. So did you say that in your special because it's relevant to a joke you're telling? Or did you say that in your special because having autism puts you in a protected class that will allow you to shout words like hate speech at anyone who has a dissenting opinion? Here's how I look what? at it. First, Hannah didn't know she was autistic until she was almost 40. Second, autism is an antisocial disorder that makes it difficult for you to understand social cues from people. But when I'm watching this comedy special, what do I see? A person who is public speaking in front of a big audience with a Netflix special performing one of the most difficult social skills, which is getting people to laugh. It takes an incredible amount of social intelligence to make large audiences think you're funny. Now, I certainly don't think she's funny, and I think a ton of- Holy fuck. The way he's talking about things mean, it means that he thinks that people with autism can't do fucking anything right, but like, some people with autism get very, have very, like, get hyper fixated on funny shit and become comedians. Like, yeah. Ugh, this is painful to watch. Hosa, you fucking asshole. Why did you make, why did you. Why did, why did you share this? Why did you share this with me? How could you? People would agree, but at the very least, she has her own crowd laughing, which suggests that she understands social cues. Maybe yeah. not to the level that Dave Chappelle understands them, but certainly more than the average person. So at what point is this a disability that you can claim victim status for? You <laughs> clearly have no problem throwing around the term hate speech, which is just a political silencing tool that has- When did you, like, a political silencing tool? Like, that's basically why he doesn't like her, is because he, she calls out hate speech. That That's it. He just, he's just a sad, he's just sad because he can't make fun of the person with autism anymore. Even though, like, it, it is possible, quite possible, that he has some form of neurodivergency, but uh, no shade against him. It's just like, maybe get that shit diagnosed, buddy, before you start, like, getting up on everyone else's case for shit that, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta wipe your own ass first, mate. That's pretty much nothing to do with actual hatred. Now, I will give Hannah some credit. Hannah actually has been the victim of some pretty horrible crimes. Unfortunately, this is YouTube, so I have to say the YouTube-friendly version, but I'm sure you can figure out what I mean in the upcoming sentence. Hannah was the victim of violent assault. She was the victim of involuntary sex as an adult. And oh no, is she just, ta w but wasn't she just playing the victim? I thought that she was just playing the victim. <sighs> you're not, ju you're not enabling her to just to play the victim, are you? Huh? Yeah. She was the victim of extra special child playtime. I need, I need a second a opinion kid. on this. These things are absolutely horrible. Hold on a second. Give me a sec. All right. Um, hope that there might be some double up audio here for a bit, but um, so apologies for that. 
And Hannah, and Hannah I'm, sorry I'm sorry that you had to you experience, had to experience that. that. People who, people harm, who children harm children are the worst, are the worst kinds, kinds of people. people. But when I say, but when this, I say next this next thing, thing maybe, you'll maybe you'll understand why I don't trust, trust that, that Hannah mentioned her autism, autism simply, for simply for comedic, comedic effect, effect, because Hannah because and Hannah people like her are constantly are trying to claim special status so that when bad things happen to them, they get special treatment. Hannah describes her assault as a hate crime, which is a term used to describe that you have been a victim of assault, but you have special status, so your assault is extra special. This actually, this actually devalues, devalues the, experience the experience of other victims of, other victims of, assault, of assault by saying, by that, saying their that their experience isn't as valid because they because aren't they a part of a protected, of a protected group. group. What happened to, what happened Hannah, to Hannah was horrible and it was done by people who are evil, evil, but constantly, constantly insisting, insisting that you are a part of a special, of a special class, class leads you to, leads you to leads thinking that certain behaviors are okay for you to do but not okay for other people to do when in reality it's wrong if anyone does it. For example, the only people who lose Yeah, that's where I was with it. Right to render another human being powerless. They are the weak. Do you this not is, that see was the, the irony of this statement? This statement? What, do what do you think cancel, cancel culture, culture is? is? You may not you may be physically, not be physically harming... harming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This motherfucker thinks that assaulting a woman for looking queer is in 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 the street and beating the shit out of her. Is the same as cancel culture, which doesn't even fucking exist. <laughs> also, Sophie says hi. Ah. <laughs> Hands. Oh, I'll put the second camera. God no. <laughs> The person. the person, but you are, but taking, you are away taking away their ability, their ability to feed or provide, or provide shelter, shelter for themselves and their families. Holy and a lot of times, it's Holy worse than simply you lose your job. job. It's you it's lose your job, and these, and these activists are so insane, insane that they will, that they will check, check up on you and make it so you lose your next job and the job after that. So how exactly are you the good guy here when you write messages like this on Instagram that encourage cancel culture? I showed sympathy for what happened to you. Unnecessarily monotone. How the... I, 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 but, but I've got, I, I was thinking, like, how does this person sound when they laugh? And I've settled on the guy from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> I showed sympathy for what happened to you, SpongeBob. Oh, SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. But yeah. I definitely think he's neurodivergent. I was just checking to see, like, if, if um, Jordan would despise them or not, because that's usually a good tell. Uh, yeah, it's just <laughs> one, one of those annoying bits where, like, there's, like... I mean, like... Ben Shapiro reads is massively autistic, which... Holy shit, he sounds the same as well. Yeah. I can almost see the slight frown on his face. Fucking hell. <laughs> I need some eye bleach after this. Uh, just think of, uh, Bob Kotick. Bob Kotick? Who's Bob Kotick? Activision. Ah, fuck! You did it! <laughs> you fuck! Get out of here! I hate you! <laughs> Bobby Kotick! Ah! <laughs> no, I love you. I was just joking. <gasps> Particularly the stuff that happened to you when you were a child. That's something I do all the time on this channel. But let me ask you this. Did you show sympathy towards Dave Chappelle when he told the story of how his... Fuck off. Fuck off. Did you... Sh did, I, I know exactly what he's about to say. When, when, how his friend committed suicide. Um, his friend uh, committed suicide due to, like, their own, um, mental health problems which weren't addressed properly and weren't... And, um, at no point... Um, did they say to anyone that it had anything to do with, uh, uh like, uh, woke people attacking them? That framing has come from the family, who has basically just coasted off of that whole thing. It's kind of... not kind of, it is gross. It's fucking gross that, uh, that, uh, the fa their family, that, that the family decided to do that. It's really fucking gross. So, yeah. Uh... Get your facts straight, mate. Friend died? You said you watched his whole special, so you should know that the events that led to that were committed mm. by people who think they are a part of a special class, so their bullying didn't count. No. That actually is a absolute lie and not how the, the situation happened. I encourage you to do some research into that. Like, 
the thing the the thing in fact that was really fucking gross of Dave Chappelle to bring up a dead person's name to speak on his behalf. Um that's fucking gross that he did that. Um it was gross and it was weak and it was fucking and it was fucking uncalled for. Um on the other hand, we have Hannah Gatsby here, who ha is talking about her own fucking horrific trauma. I don't know, buddy. I think, uh... I think that Hannah Gatsby is a better man than... I think Hannah Gatsby is a better man than um, Dave Chappelle. But yeah, it's not like uh... fucking hell. The, the 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 weird the 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 way he's like conflating those two issues as if they're the same thing is kind of gross. Like he's conflating a man who's made who's. Um, uh, taking a story that was made up by the dead person's family to speak on his behalf um, without giving... so, Which is fucking easy to do because uh, at the end of the day, like, it's not as if uh, she can um, tell, her, tell the real story about uh, her problems at this point because she's dead. And instead of, um, because I watched this, I watched this, I saw, I saw what he said about it. Um, and it's not as if he spoke about the abuse that was, it, that the, the problems that his friend had. It's not as if he, um, talked about with her, uh, with any form of respect past, uh, past mortem. Um, in fact, like, I don't think that, it didn't doesn't sound like he he's ever talked about her in any other way than to use her her memory to fucking wipe it, wipe the slate clean and effectively become a black guy doing the I have a black friend argument with a transgender woman who can't fucking talk back cuz she killed herself you fucking disgusting disgraceful pathetic Piece of trash, Dave Chappelle. But no, by all means, by all means, go on about how how uh, Hannah Gatsby is uh, like, you know, uh, so problematic and um, so like so much cancel culture that you want to like cancel her. Yeah, go on, tell tell us more, tell us more. I'm I'm very interested to hear your perspective on this. Out. When do we ever see sympathy from the woke crowd for anyone who is not on their team? Instead, what we see is people like Hassan. Who do you think are the people that the woke crowd are against? And maybe figure out who they are, right? What kind of person the woke mob uh, have an issue with? And then I think you should have your the answer for why they don't want to have them be part of their crowd, so to speak. I think that should answer your question quite be like better than anything else possibly could. I'll give you a hint. It's because they're usually Nazis and fuckers who want to take the rights away from women to have bodily autonomy and uh, other such things that we enjoy here in the West. My gosh. This guy's a fucking idiot. On and Ethan laughing at a guy who died of COVID because he had political beliefs that they didn't like. All right, moving on. The Herman Cain Awards. Like, I rip heavy into, like, conservative commentators who get COVID and die. Like, mm -hmm. after God rips into them, I'm, I'm taking one, too. Sloppy you know what seconds. I mean? Yeah, I'm taking God's sloppy seconds there. <laughs> so when they die, I celebrate it. Right. For sure. I mean, I'm, I'm a horrible person, so don't, don't, you know. <laughs> if you want all the chaos to stop, then you need to treat your opponents like humans instead of like trash. And I am saying this to people on both sides of the... No. No. 
Um, that doesn't work. Sorry. Sorry to tell you this, but uh, no, like showing respect to Nazis didn't work. And it, it's never worked. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't really say anything more than that. At the end of the day, like, that doesn't work. Didn't work uh, in Nazi Germany, doesn't work uh, today. Uh, these people will still continue to try and take away the human rights of uh, trans people. Like, whether we're... Like, whether we're being accepting towards them or not. You want proof? Well, just look at the um, the uh, gay conservative uh, sector of the Conservative Party. Like, they recently just basically said, hey, we've lost our fight to uh, be included in the Republican Party caucus. Like, when you treat these people like humans, there's absolutely no guarantee or incentive for them to do the same to you. In fact, they, they, they won't. They, they don't. That's just something that doesn't happen. I don't know, like, how I can make this point more, like, clear to you. At the end of the day, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. Like, stop it. Get some help. Yeah. The political spectrum. If we don't start doing that and people just go on believing that they are the exception to the rule, so their bad behaviors don't count, then bad things will continue to happen. Because here's where this rhetoric gets dangerous. Do you know why I love picking on straight white men and telling jokes about straight white men? Because they're such good sports. <laughs> they're like, oh, good joke about me. Maybe the actual reason is that you aren't afraid of being cancelled by them. Wow, that's really brave of you. You really speak truth to power, going after the group you know won't fight back. Here's the thing. <laughs> What? Holy shit, dude. That was sarcasm. That was like soaking in fucking sarcasm. Holy shit, dude. Why? Why are you like this? He actually took that fucking seriously. What the fuck? If you are allowed to criticize someone, then they aren't in power. If you want to know who's really in power, then think about who you aren't allowed to criticize. Look, if you want to criticize me for being straight and a man, or make jokes about that, I have no problem. I believe in free speech. But what I really find offensive is you saying that you can criticize me, but I'm not allowed to criticize you. That's unfair. It's not- Particularly- Nobody's fucking saying that, dude. People- like, she- do you know what a hate speech is? <laughs> It's like he thinks that uh, that she's saying that uh, people... It's like he's conflating, like, the literal violence against trans people with, um... With, with, with... Literal violence against trans people with, um... Just... The people telling her that her... Her... Stand-up is is terrible. Like, that that's what he thinks, that's what he's conflating here, he's conflating both of those things as if they're, same, they're the same thing. That's not hate speech. Well, I hated it. Yep, that's fucking right. Holy Wait, when shit. the crap she is saying is not even true. Uh, so I'm not very experienced in, in, you know, controlling anger. It's not my place to be angry on a comedy stage. My, I'm supposed to be doing self-deprecating humour. Um, people feel safer when men do the angry comedy. Uh, they're the kings of the genre. When I do it, I'm just a miserable lesbian ruining all the fun on the banter. When men do it, heroes of free speech. So, like, even that, even the way that she's talking is, like, so Australian and so, like, autistic at the same time. I, I absolutely fucking love it. I, I love it so much. Um... And, like, I'm not going to be able to explain properly, like, how I came to those conclusions. You're just going to have to trust me about that. Because, you know, why would I, why would I explain myself? I'm a woke, uh, I'm part of the woke mob. I don't, uh, 
have to do that because I have um, George Soros power and money. Apparently, I, I am part of the I, I CIA. Give me give give give. Please, please give money, CIA. I, 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 I need money for um the for the pur for for the purposes. Yeah, like, have you noticed that the way she talks is so ochre, and so that and the I, again the one one of the main reasons why I, I love her so much is that like, she just the disdain for humanity is something I. Or, like, it's not disdain for humanity, like, the tolerance of human beings, rather than anything else, like, is something that a lot of people don't really get from interacting with normal people, but, like, that it's there with, with uh, certain people with autism, and when you combine autism and Australian, and Ocker Australian, um, and, you know, that, um, you, you get Jordan, for me. It's 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 why I love Jordan so much. It's part of the part of the things that I love so much about Jordan as a friend. Well, yeah, there's that as well. I do I I share that fascination. Like th there's a morbid curiosity. I think it's I think it's um morbid curiosity more than anything else. It's just like these pe these Romans are crazy sort of shit, you know? Yay! Uh, I think he understands. I think, um, as well, like, we have a tendency of, uh, pro we probably make, um, make, uh, him feel like, I don't know, I, I just don't, I just hope that I don't, that, that I don't make him feel, like, infantilized. You know what I mean? That's the danger with interacting with people with neurodivergencies not I'm not saying it's int intentional but it's something that you know we fall into but yeah having I have a deep love for neurodivergent people as it is, and a, fast, and a shared fascination with the morbid curiosity of human beings. They say things like that because you aren't good. Anger can be hilarious whether it comes from a male or a female comedian, so if people aren't laughing at that, it's because you- She's- she, mate, 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 buddy, old pal, she's poking out the- she's poking fun at stereotypes. One of the most basic of basics of forms of comedy. Like, if you want to go to basics of comedy, like, that, that, that's one of them. That is one of the basics of comedy. Ah. Uh, not three, maybe? Yes. Is it if you if you're unable to understand that then i don't think that yeah i think that you're gonna have problems you aren't funny so let's bring this back home for a second because this video is about caring about other people we can tell that hannah cares more about herself than her audience because she doesn't make an effort to adjust her material so people find her funny and because she doesn't extend sympathy to people who politically disagree with her that you mean like Dave Chappelle, perhaps? Maybe maybe that's something that uh, Dave Chappelle might be guilty of, mayhaps? Uh, I, I think that you just don't like her, and that's, that's, you don't like women. I think that's what it is, you just don't like women, and you're just looking for an excuse to shit on them. Like, that's the only, that's, that's the only thing I can, like, gather from this. Yeah, like, it's, it's, I guess it's not meant for you then, buddy, or I guess it is, in a sense, if you do have neurodivergencies, who knows, who fucking knows, but still, yeah, I, I think, maybe not everything should be adjusted to the neurotypical cishet white man, well, now you're just being cancel culture, 
I think you're just being a can a, a, a cancel a cancel a cancel candy. Hmm. Yeah. You don't want to be cancelled, people. Definitely don't want that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the most uh, don't forget about the most oppressed class, gamers. That last part is really important. Now, if you were to follow my internet activity, you would find that I interact with my viewers a lot. I really don't want to go through your fucking internet history. Holy shit. No. Clean that hard drive. I- I- no. No. Stop it. No. I- I'm not interested. I do not want to look at your fucking internet history. Wow. Dude, no. Holy fuck. I feel like I would be a- I, th I feel like I would end up being arrested by, like, fucking default. From that. You know what I mean? Jesus swept. Yeah, fucking hell, fucking hell. That's that's the that's what I'd expect to see. Holy fuck. No, please don't. Please, for the love I, of all that is fucking. But I also argue fucking... with people a lot. I do that because I'm trying to figure out which arguments work on people who disagree with me. Most of those are. Well, that's fucking. That's a fucking telling thing. So you don't have arguments with people because you want to understand them. Is what I'm getting. You don't want to understand other people's point of view. You just want to win arguments. So yeah, he's he's just a debate debate bro Andy. Just a debate bro Andy who can't do the debate without a script, I guess. Ah, come back here. Ah, fuck it. That's a terrible way to approach arguments in fail, debate. But every so often a good one is found, and then that goes into a video. More importantly, what I've really found after years of making videos is this. Most people is don't care you, about what you said. At the end of the day, they only care about how you made them feel. Much higher opinion Apparently of yourself than you should. Said that. So if you just want to shout your opinion at someone who disagrees with you, nothing you say will matter. The other person well, at least will he remember none it. of it. But if they said something like, I believe what I believe because a long time ago this bad thing happened to me and you respond Wow, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I understand what you're saying. Here's how I believe the problem can be resolved. A conversation like that where disagreeing parties are respectful of each other will go 10 times better than one where you just shout your opinions. Even if you still disagree at the end, the good faith and the relationship building is the important part. The older I get, the more I realize Good faith, fucking gag. Fuck your good good faith. Good faith isn't gonna give anyone anything. Holy fuck. Good faith. For for those of you who don't know, debate bro, lo debate bro, um, uh, bloody, um, uh, fucking bullshit. I guess is the word. Sorry. Kind of lost m myself on that one, but like the debate bro bullshit like that. That's effectively what that is. Is it is, um, I don't agree with you, therefore um, you are being bad faith. Bad faith is effectively everything that debate bros disagree with. At the end of the day, oh, the formatting comes complete. Very nice. Yeah, debate debate bros just think that when someone disagrees with them, um, that that that's basically what uh, being uh, bad faith is. That's it. That's all it is. Where did this one come from, by the way? Oh no, that's right. But yeah that the rules of debate need to change because if they don't change one side will shout louder and win and the side who loses will end up in a camp that's why I don't like it when woke groups say horrible things about straight white men and then say you aren't allowed to say anything about their group identity politics always ends in violence the way we stop that is by realizing that we have common ground the left will say Big monopolistic corporations are evil, and all they want is to turn everyone into slaves. While the right will say, Big monopolistic government is evil, and all it wants is to turn everyone into slaves. Actually, both of those things are true. A story- 
why, oh, fucking hell, this shit, uh, why can't we just meet in the, why can't we just meet in the center? Why can't we meet in the center? Alright, so the le so you're just pointing out straw mans on the right and the left. Like, no one on the right wants big monop monopolistic uh, corporations, that's just what ends up being. Um, okay, like, grow up. Uh, and understand that the intentions of left, the left and the right uh, and the results are not entirely the same thing. Also, the intention of the left is not to create big monopolistic governments. Like, it is the opposite. Quite literally the opposite. Um, we want to... We, the left wants to um, take as much... put as much power in the hands of the people in for in the hands of the voting public that that's what the left wants and some people on the left like me want there to be no unjustified hierarchy within that system at all so working towards a lack of a need for any um government in the way that it is structured at this point no unjustified hierarchy that's the it's the, the the key word or the key phrase that we can have more than one villain but if we insist on yelling at each other just to be right instead of fixing the problem the divide and conquer strategy will work and those to someone who doesn't understand politics everything sounds like everything looks like people just screaming at each other that's what this is just wanted to translate that for y'all the problem with big brain centrism is it do it doesn't actually um, try and solve any issues. At the end of the day, it's not trying to fix any problems. It's just basically saying that um, did this work? No, it didn't. What's going on here? Hold on a sec, sorry. There we go, now it's working. Yep. But yeah. Big brain centrists don't really care about the what the difference between right and wrong at the end of the day. They don't really care about that side of things. They care more about the optics of it all, like, oh, like, they, they care more about whether pe whether people uh, play nice or not, rather than whether, you know, an argument is correct or not. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong as long as everyone played by the rules. That's the point. It's like... It's not about the real problems that are affecting real people and how these things affect each other, affect it, like people. It doesn't. It's not about like trying to make life better for people. It's about like <laughs> his annoyance that people won't play by the rules of debate rather than actually creating a better society for people. It's not about finding middle ground. Middle ground isn't going to get us shit or shit, it isn't going to get us, give us shit at the end of the day. Um, middle ground is not going to solve climate change. Middle ground is not going to give us Medi Medicare and affordable health care. Middle ground is not going to give us, um, a better system than capitalism affords us right now. It's just not going to solve these problems that are inherent within the systems that we are a part of. It's not. It's fucking childish to think that things work like that at the end of the day. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry, I guess. Like, you can't change the world by ceding ground to fucking Nazis. Uh, people did that. It didn't work. 
let's not try that again. Because it didn't work. And we know it didn't work. So we gotta do better now. Because we know better now. I guess that's it. Alright. Before you fuck up everything. Ah! Oh no. Oh dear. Alright. So, whew. You gonna survive that? Alright, cool. Phew! Phew, that was a uh, close one. Two evil entities will get exactly what they want. So what we do <sighs> is we change the rules of debate by using techniques to help us understand each other and by creating a system where we can all work together despite our ideas. You literally said that you, the thing you like to do in debates is work out how to beat your argument, beat other people's arguments. That's not... <laughs> that's, that's, that's antithetical to your argument. That's a complete contradiction in the way that you want arguments to be formed. What are you talking about? This is just... All of this is, is just moralize, spouting moralizing um, talking points, which aren't going to fix shit. Fucking hell. I guess, I guess finding middle ground, I guess finding middle ground, um, fucking, uh, fucking Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's find middle ground with, with, um, the Republicans. We'll see how, what that does to women's bodily autonomy at the end of the day. I think we know how that affected women's bodily autonomy at the end of the day. It doesn't work. Stop it. Get some help. At the end of the day, it's all just fucking moralizing bullshit. It's saying that, oh, we can't get moved forward because people keep arguing. We've gotten too fucking comfortable with this... Respectability politics bullshit. As if being respectful ever gave us shit. I'm sorry to say that it didn't. Oh shit. Don't die, don't die. Keep going. At the end of the day, it's night time. Yeah. Sorry, I used that one a little bit too much, don't I? Yeah. But that's just a theory, a game theory. Theological differences. That starts by taking an interest in the people. And the, the reason why I call this moralizing bullshit is because he hasn't actually brought up any, like, any fucking analysis of what his uh, point of view is. Um, all he's done is use rhetoric to try and make a point. And the problem with that is you don't win wars on rhetoric. You don't make progress with rhetoric. You can see what rhetoric gets you by looking at Joe Biden of the let's find the middle ground with the Republicans party. Doesn't work. Never has. Fucking idiotic. Mate, I do not have to be respectful to you or anyone else if they try and take my rights away from me. I will fight that using any and all te fucking tactics. And uh, if respectability helps me, great. If it doesn't, I'm fucking throwing it away. Because it's useless to me if it doesn't fucking work. People you are speaking to but with that said i think that's enough for this video so if you liked it hit the like button subscribe if you're new comment and share if you would like to support this channel then you can do so with paypal patreon or subscribe star yeah i'm not gonna do that i think you're a fucking idiot i mean you're worst kind of idiot you're the centrist idiot who thinks that you need to find a middle ground between nazis and libs which is the dumbest shit is the literal dumbest shit ever for this, this dumbest shit
try to imagine trying to find middle ground between Nazis and libs. Just think about where that fucking ends up. Man, if you if you find middle ground between Nazis and libs, do you know what happens? Do you know what happens that from there? Um, the 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 Nazis move. Uh, the the Nazis move further to the right. That they, they they just move forward forward. You you give them an inch, and they will take a mile, and they will take a Zeke Heil at the end of the day. You fucking idiot. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, don't forget to check me out on odysseyandminds.com. You one. can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next thanks video. Thanks for watching. SpongeBob. Ah! I don't want to fucking look at that anymore. Oh. Wait, why did it do that? Should have done the green thing. Damn it, Hoser. Respectability politics is fucking bullshit. Optics are only important if you can show how they actually have an effect over a conversation. If it has an effect, great. I'm with you. Cool. Whatever, dude. Yeah. I'll support I'll support your uh, respectability politics bullshit. Cool. Why not? YOLO. Um, but too often, it doesn't result in any meaningful change or... Fucking anything, really. Doesn't result in any meaningful, um... Well, it's definitely cringe. That guy is, like, cringe personified. Ah! But, yeah. That'll probably be almost it for today, though. So I have to say my apologies for leaving y'all. I need to start work very shortly. Yes. Right after I finish this road piece, I think. Yes. Oh, hey, man. He came back. Oh, yeah, of course. No, I love it. Don't think... Don't, hey, don't think that, like, my complaining is... is don't mistake my complaining of, uh, about the content for, like, my absolute uh, horror... Like, my hatred... For, for absolute hatred of it. You know, it all serves a purpose. At the end of the day, I can make... I make lemonade. I make lemonade, that's what I do. I make that lemonade. And then that lemonade milkshake, I guess, brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I'll have to charge. My lemonade. Mmm, sweet lemonade. Mmm, mmm, -mm. yummy, 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 lemonade. So what's my stance on the Ukrainian war? There shouldn't be one. Yelra, welcome to the chat. First time chatter. There shouldn't be a Ukraine war, but there is, and it sucks, and a lot of people are suffering. And um, yeah, Putin, stop it. Get some help. Um, yeah, there's there's imperial imperialism sucks always. There's not much else I can really say about it than that, really. Um, imperialism is uh, fucking bullshit. 
Um, yeah. There's no really real way to both sides it either. Like Ukraine, you, 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 Ukraine. It would be nice if Ukraine uh, became a communist state, but uh, it's not going to come from being conquered by um, America's guy. Um, at the end of the day. Because Putin has always been America's guy. Ah! Forgot about that shit. Oh no! You're gonna fall down? You're gonna. <gasps> oh, it's gonna struggle for the first time! Haha, <laughs> sucker. Oh no, wait, I don't need to do that. Right now, because I can just do that. Haha. <laughs> yes. Like a boss. Okay, let's just do that one. But yeah. The way the Euro the way the from the start, the way the Ukrainian war has been covered and uh, you know, mostly forgotten about now, um, by most people, um, has been pretty shit, especially from white people. I can really only comment on how um, white people have, from the start, talking about like how it is a civilized war, uh, inverted commas, ne necessary within that statement there. Um, it's kind of gross. Not just kind of gross, it's really fucking gross that uh, that's been the... the uh, The narrative that's uh, run from the start, um, for so many reasons, like including the fact that like Slavs have uh, historically been uh, treated as you know subhuman by um, you know Nazis and white supremacists, so it's really weird to see Nazis within um, these uh, like people. It's not weird to see nationalists um, taking part. But it is fucking weird to see so many, like, Nazi um, people by the book war, I guess. It could, you could call it by the book, I suppose, but um, still, I don't think there's really much, like, I don't think you can really call it civilized... Although it is interesting to note that um, when it comes to warfare, um, there are things that you can do in wartime that you can't... Uh, that, wait, there's things you aren't able to do within wartime that, um, you, that governments continually do to their own people, which is, uh, again, kind of really fucking gross uh, that, uh, that that distinction is made. You know, for 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 example, tear gas is illegal. Is is you know against the rules of modern warfare, um, and uh, you know other stuff like that. It's just cringe and gross that uh, we draw the lines there, like we do. And really, we should not be doing imperialist fucking wars. The whole native, the whole NATO fucking um, dialogue as well is really fucking cringe. At the end of the day, all of these, all of these supposed leftists simping for either simping for NATO or like um, talking about NATO as if it's like the, a huge issue when it comes, like, the, the biggest issue there is when it comes to this whole situation, like, NATO didn't instigate this war, this war was always part of the Russian, um, imperial plans, like, they've been, they, they've constantly and consistently, like, conquered, um, Ukraine over fucking centuries. They've always been fucking them over, just like uh, Japan was always fucking over China and uh, Korea and stealing their um, culture. 
and then like talking about their own superior culture. It's weird. It literally always happens. It's like when you give your kids a modern toy and they're like, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying it's not true. I just think that that's a very... <sighs> that's that's a more... I think that lacks any possible nuance. Um, and whether that's true or not, I guess, it doesn't... It's not a statement which helps. It's a statement which hinders. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that... I'm, I'm, more, I'm more saying that, like, that's... I mean... Can we aim a little higher? <laughs> is is what I want to go for. <laughs> Can we aim a little higher? Um, I, my problem with that is that with, that tends to be like an argument ender rather than a um, dialogue continuer. Like people just say, "Oh, it's it's part of you know the human experience. Like it'll never it'll it'll never change." Blah blah blah. That sort of stuff. Which may or may not be true. My issue is that we should probably find out more and attempt to make it not true and then work on even and then, you know, if we do find the case that war is always going to be a thing, how do we um how how can we reduce the damage that it causes, like what, what, what ways can we move forward in, in to make it make a better fucking world? I guess. I, I, I just as long as that, as long as that statement comes with the idea that we're actually going to be working on solutions rather than giving up, because to me that phrase would come up, come with a lot of oh something got um, fucking hell everything gets um auto modded. There we go. Sorry, that, that something got automated. I don't think that I allowed it. Did I allow it? Disappeared? Did it disappear? It disappeared. What the fuck? Rude. I think I clicked the wrong button. Oh well. Uh huh. Well, it won't ever change, though. People always want things, and they think even they'll try and take them. Um, I mean, that's a good place to start, Yelra. Um, so, if uh, like if we assume that's true, then we can actually come up with some um, ways to reduce the amount of damage that it, that uh, that it does. So let's assume that uh, people always want things, and if they aren't given them, they'll try to take them. Okay, uh, let's assume that's true. Um, how do we create a society which allows people to have those things um, so that they don't try to take them from someone else? I know that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. See, like that—that's how a Marxist um, would probably would look at that sort of uh, thing. Uh, though, a, whereas a conservative or, you know, far-right type will look at that and say, that's the way the world is, and the only thing you can do is, as an individual, work hard to try and overcome it. Whereas me, I say, well, there isn't much... There, there is a small amount that an individual can do to work hard and try to overcome those th those things, but it would be better to try and restructure society by working together so that future generations no longer need to face those same problems. They can move on and solve other problems. We shouldn't accept that things are static and never change because we know from history that that's just not the case. Things are not static and they do change. So let's take that knowledge that we've we've discovered from observing the world around us and try and do something with it. But yeah, I do need to. Oh, it is eleven o'clock.
And I do need to go to my second job. Yay! Don't forget to follow if you want to watch more and talk more about politics. This is my first time actually using the politics tag because it's, you know, fun. But in any case, uh, until next time, um, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and take care of someone else. And I'll see you probably tomorrow.